Hello, Internet, and uh, welcome to Slang 101. Uh, you're probably wondering, I'm not Savannah, uh, and you'd be right, I'm not. Uh, I uh, Unfortunately, we've had a couple of changes to our, fortunately and unfortunately, we've had a couple of changes to our uh, schedule here today. Um, I'm going to be running a little uh, Monster of the Week one-shot for these fools, um, because Savannah, unfortunately, is sick today. Uh and I hope she feels better as soon as possible because I don't want to get sick. Uh, and uh, we had, unfortunately, uh, Rob and Sid also could not join us, but we caught an RJ. So uh, we get to enjoy uh, your company, or RJ's company, on a very special Valentine's Day uh, one shot that we're going to be doing. A um, couple of quick uh, announcements before we get started um our lineup for this week uh we will have our next stream after this one will be thursday when we will have our uh continuation of our all myths are true campaign as we're playing tales from the loop a uh, bunch of kids on bikes in the 80s riding around and solving mysteries in their uh hometown in uh, alabama um and then on Saturday, we will have our next session of Saturday Night's Thunderball, uh, which I run. Uh, also, uh, it's a D&D 5th Edition uh, campaign. Uh, we've had a couple, two sessions so far, so it's pretty new. Um, if you're interested in sort of D&D mixed with sports and other weirdness, uh, come check it out. And then next Sunday, a week from today, at 7 o'clock... Eastern Time, we have our uh, next session of uh, Pursuit of the Black Kestrel, our Pathfinder 2nd Edition game, um, which RJ and LB are both in. Uh, I was going to say everyone else, and then I remember G Greybeard is not in it, but you should join sometime because it's very fun. Uh, I'm going to stop talking and let you guys do your thing. Uh, we got the orders kind of messed up, so I'll go and say, uh, RJ, uh, anything you want to promote? Tell them what your deal is. Um, I'm going to be streaming a lot more. Not this week. Next week. So catch me at rjustice 282 on Twitch. Going to be like some Dauntless fun. Nice. I'm getting back into Dauntless too. Um, fun stuff. Uh, LB. Uh, you can find me Mondays and Tuesdays on Indoor Adventures. This week we are starting on Nerd Aversion's channel on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time doing our 5th edition game. Jordan with PH will be running that game and should be super fun. It's my busy week next week. Awesome. Uh, and GB. Hey, Greybeard, Greybeard's Tavern. Check my Twitter for my schedule, but uh, coming up next is Tuesday night over on Indoor Adventures with LB and RJ, we uh, are our water deep characters, and uh, we are participating in the War of the Spark. You also um, forgot that this Wednesday's Monster Noir, big guy. I I've got more than that. They'll just have to look that one up. <laughs> <laughs> We're all doing a lot of stuff. Check out our Twitters and all sorts of fun announcements and other things going on there. Um, and as always, join. Uh, our game nights uh, Discord link below. Uh, you can check out our schedule there and get uh, updated announcements on all our goings on. Um, but that all aside, uh, I also realized so I, I point out to you guys at the beginning of the stream that my nails disappear uh, on this, but also my I'm just drinking out of a floating uh, Heineken label uh, today. This stream not brought to you by Heineken, uh, so just ghostly all around. Um, so. As I said before, we're playing Monster of the Week. Uh, we'll introduce all of our characters in a minute. Uh, but let's go ahead and bring us into the mystery. Change up my music a bit. All right. February 16th, 2020. Valentine's Weekend. The streets of Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia, sport the cast-off trappings of another Valentine's Day past. 
torn paper hearts dangle from street lamps, and shop workers lazily unspool yards of pink and red lights from the shop windows and other, uh, and as another weekend comes to a close. Yet, not all is quiet in the upscale, gentrified suburbia of North Atlanta. The gilded lettering tacked to the brick signage uh, outside of uh, Green Hill, Garden Hills, sorry, I left something out of my notes, uh, outside of Garden Hills uh, neighborhood in Buckhead reflects the red and blue pulsing lights of an APD cruiser as it sits outside of 4242 Acorn Drive. Yellow police tape crosses the driveway and a CSI van idles in the mansion's large circular drive. Your group, the 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 three of you uh, investigators, uh, where are you right now uh, in relationship to this investigation? Or, and we talked briefly, uh, uh, prompted you guys to come up with uh, maybe an idea for your approach. Um, I want to introduce your characters in a second, but I kind of want to get an idea of how you are coming up to this crime scene that you have been clued into. Uh, I believe my character would have either took a rent a car down or like took a bus. Okay. Uh, are the three of you uh, coming in together or are you, do you each have your own kind of fronts that you're coming in with or are you trying to come in as a unit? I think it's funnier if we just meet on the spot like Spider Man okay. pose. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so um, let's start with LB. Um, your character, because I know a little bit about yours and why you might be here. Uh, who are you playing? I am playing Jesse Kelly, private detective. Uh, she is a almost 30 uh, year old woman, long brown hair, uh, dresses very uh, like tailored suits, uh, leather jacket type, uh, very typical noir style. She kind of mixes the the dame that walks in with the uh, private detective. Uh, today she's not wearing her hat, but sometimes she does because I don't own a hat like that. Um, but uh, she is probably pulling up in a really old, like beat up station wagon of some kind, uh, parking a little ways down and she's got a coffee in her hand and uh, it's piping hot. It looks like it's from like one of those, like, like the uh, gas station. Okay. And she's just uh, rolling up, takes off her sunglasses, puts them in her pocket, walks uh, up to the police line. <laughs> I think as you approach the uh, the tape that's um, blocking off the end of the driveway, uh, you see there there are a couple of cruisers around, and uh, one of them there's a uh, like a beat cop that is uh, standing uh, at the end of the driveway to keep some of like the, there's like a press van uh, mm -hmm. of like the local Atlanta news that's uh, just across the street, um, kind of mm -hmm. keeping them back. Uh, and uh, you recognize her, a, uh, an officer, a contact of yours, uh, uh, Ellie Spamoni, um, mm -hmm. standing at the, uh, at the end of the driveway, uh, arms crossed, trying to look kind of intimidating uh, to keep mm -hmm. some of the onlookers and uh, nosy Nellies from approaching we're very closely devolving with some of my lingo into the mm -hmm. 1920s Sorry. aesthetic Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay uh but she sees you and uh, uh i think holds up a holds up a hand and kind of looks around she says um it's good you came i assume she knows a little bit about what you do since she's your contact yeah. okay yeah well, I uh, come and I'm called. What can I do for you, Ellie? There's some weird shit going on in there. I'm not really, uh, can't really say much about what's happening, but saying it's an animal attack. Mm, that's a and, good cover. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know much about the area, but there aren't that many animals that are going to come waltzing into, uh, place like this kind of gestures over his shoulder to the perfectly manicured lawn um mm -hmm. and the uh two-story uh uh house behind her mansion manor house behind it uh mm -hmm. she says now I, I really can't do much to get you inside um I, the detective's taken over the investigation uh, is a bit of a 
bit of a hard ass. Um, Is it O'Malley? He's an asshole. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, O'Malley's uh, he's he's out uh, right now. Um, uh, Reynolds or no, uh, mm. Wallace uh, has took over the uh, oh, investigation. Wallace. Um, so I can uh, I can let you pass the tape, but if he starts asking questions, he might kick you out Why pretty fast. That's what I gotta be. I understand. Yeah. Uh, and I think she begins to stand aside to let you pass, but, uh, as she does, uh, let's see, I want to come in next. Uh, RJ, who are you playing? Uh, I'm playing Harto Hayashi. He is a forensic scientist, um, quote unquote, uh, I'll be playing the, the monstrous playbook, but, uh, Looks to be in his mid thirties, early thirties. Um, kind of wearing super casual clothing for his job descriptor. So it's like <clears throat> just a t-shirt, um, like a button up, like not like a, like a flannel shirt on top of it that's open and the sleeves are rolled up. Jeans and boots, and he's probably walking up to the tape right now and pulling out like his badge to flash to an officer. Okay, and what did you say? His uh, what's the badge? What's your position? uh forensics forensics okay so are you with like the apd or um are you forensics yeah quote unquote uh okay um so i think you walk up so there is a because there's a csi uh van that's already there um you come up and you see because you know uh oh shit i'm gonna have to remember all your guys names care you guys a uh, character name. you know jesse um and you recognize her as you're as you're walking up, uh, about to head up towards the house. Slowly tucks the badge back, walks up behind her, and like taps her on the shoulder. Uh, she spins uh, in an aggressive way, and then she sees who it is. Hey, dollface, how you been? It's been good. Pushes like a pair of glasses up on his nose. So it's uh, one of those cases, huh? That's what it seems to be, but I haven't been inside yet. Great. Nice. I like the sound effects. <laughs> yeah, I planned that. <laughs> <clears throat> what brought you here? Um, chatter on the police scan officer. Does she to know each other? And we go way back. She kind of looks over to you and listens to this conversation. She says, I'm going to walk to the other said i don't want to be a part of whatever's going on here and she just kind of walks to the other side of the uh of the driveway to just give some distance sweet dame that one mm. that mean you already have an in or do we have to work something out i can get past the tape but if they start asking questions well i'm out of luck csi's already here and i don't think this badge is going to get me through much so shucks to that Looks like in your, you're in with me, kid, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally, just to complete this trifecta, uh, <laughs> Greybeard, what is your character? I'm Tam Tamlin Corbin, and I'm the spell slinger. And uh, did either of you guys call Tamlin on this one? I don't think I would have because you don't know I'm alive. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I would have probably called in and been okay. like, hey, Tam, there's a job. Let's go. All right. So uh, a, a a beat up uh, hearse rolls up <laughs> and and it's the windows are, are, are black and all. And then the door opens in a 20 something uh, per, ruffle shirt, a big long coat with tails and stuff steps out with a with a walking stick obviously does not need it little glasses <laughs> the whole thing he steps out he steps in he, he looks back and he's like sabrina d d no it's okay i i don't need my coffee and then he slams the door and takes a step and his tails from his coat are stuck in the door and he <laughs> the aesthetic is just blown he slumps his shoulders he turns back around, opens it, pulls, makes sure his butt, you know, butt swings out, 
closes the door and then and then starts to use the walking stick to come forward um, tam what part of incognito did you not get in that message i we're the, sabrina's the only one who could drive me today i mean i could have and he sees he sees jesse and goes demon <laughs> and he, he raises the walking stick up <laughs> Hey, Slick, calm down. We're trying to keep a low profile here. You, you're dead. Are you? And he, he like, he like, unfocuses for a moment, <laughs> and like, like he's seeing beyond the veil, which he can do, and and it's like, but you're alive. Can't keep me down that easy, kid. Really? Well, glorious day, glorious day, and uh, he, I guess he, he like wants to give you a hug or something but it's just awkward and he puts his hand out like a, <laughs> she, shit, a handshake <laughs> she, like, she clasps his hand really strongly and shakes it uh, uh, well I'm glad that all worked out I mean but um, what's going on here today not sure yet gotta get inside although it might be a little difficult with you in this uh, get up hmm uh, I'm gonna try to make myself invisible. <laughs> that works. Uh, <laughs> Not so much invisible, just unnoticed. Okay, so, so sort of sort like of... a like a glamour to like keep people from even recognizing that you're there. Right. Okay, that cool. I like it. Uh, I guess that'd be uh, use magic. Okay, which is plus weird. Let's give this a shot. Just gonna step back away from him and kind of push Jess with me. Uh, it did. Looks oh. like you rolled and or no, no, that's not it. No, it didn't. That was because that was with oh. Uh, Rex. Oh, I always forget. There's that second part. Oh, okay. uh, there you go. Same thing. Uh, so you Good. rolled an eight. Uh, hmm. So on a seven to nine, uh, it works imperfectly. You choose your effect and a glitch, um, and I'll decide what effect the uh, glitch has. Um, oh, okay. So uh, your effect, it sounded like, hmm, let's see. I mean, do one thing beyond human limitations is a good catch-all. Uh, the effect is that nobody's going to notice you um, during your time here. Um, so you get to decide what the, I think you get to decide what the glitch is, and then I sort of get to interpret it. So you get to pick one oh, of those okay. uh, five. All right. Um, oh, jeez. Let's go with. I'll take a harm. I parts of me are actually like phasing out, mm. and and like like taking life force with it as it as it kind of fizzles and pops. Ow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what does it look so? Other than that, like, how are you casting? Like, is this a lot of chanting? Do you have like um, some? So I, I've got the the walking stick. I. I put in the crutch of my arm and I reach in to my pocket and I pull out a, uh, a, a like a old timey pocket watch yeah and and I use that like as a focus and then I I do um, I have incantations foci and gestures so so I'm I, I basically do Harry Potter speak and and obscurum uh, totalum the type thing and i just sort of nothing it nothing appears to change to these guys because mm -hmm. i want them to know that i'm there but anyone else who's looking over just doesn't see the see me it's like their their eye goes off of me to yeah the side. i think uh the two so yeah so it doesn't affect uh uh, Jesse or Harto, uh, but I think uh, you watch, you notice Ellie who's been uh, watching this happen and it's been kind of giving a look at um, at uh, Tamlin uh, with a look like you're not going to bring him in there, are you? Uh, and then suddenly as he finishes this incantation, she just kind of blinks a couple times and looks around confused and then just doesn't like almost like her brain is telling her just to not think of anything of it and she just sort of shrugs and goes back to very consciously not watching you as you 
head into the house. I, I believe I'll be fine at this point. And he takes the walking stick again. Great. Uh, so I think the default with use magic is that it's going to last about 30 minutes. Um, so that's about the time you have in this house. Um, so the three of you cross the police tape and head up towards the the estate here. And it is a, is a, a very big um, uh, building. And you can hear a lot of chatter from inside. Uh, and as you head in through the open front doors, there are a couple more... Uh, police officers there uh, they don't really seem to pay you much mind uh, because you're in at this point um, but you notice a couple of things as you enter uh, there is a large staircase leading up to a second level of the house uh, you hear a lot of footsteps up there and you also can see the uh, the rug and the carpeting uh, there has been like tarps laid down to prevent uh, contamination um, focused upstairs um, you get the distinct impression that that is probably where the crime scene crime scene is uh, to your left is a little like foyer um, or like a sitting room and there is you hear crying coming from in there and you look to the left as you come in and you see a couple uh, wearing um, like tennis clothing uh, with complete with like a uh, uh, like sweaters wrapped with the arms wrapped around the the, the front of their chest. Uh, 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 a man and a woman sitting in the uh, sitting room. Uh, the um, the woman is sort of just like weeping into uh, her hands. The man is sitting next to her and kind of rubbing her back. And you also see signs of uh, of tears on his uh, face. And they are both speaking to. A man in a brown, uh, like a blazer, uh, that is taking notes and seems like he is questioning him. His back is currently to you as you enter, um, but they look like they're in the middle of a um, giving their statements. Uh, and then there are a couple of other people uh, investigating and kind of combing over the house. I think Jesse is going to kind of uh, lean back to Tamlin and just say, Hey Nosferatu, why don't you uh, listen in on their conversation, see what you can find out. Hmm? He whispers back, uh, I'm on it. <laughs> and then, and then it goes to walk into the room with the walking stick and almost thumps it on the floor and then like snags it up and then puts it close to his body and <laughs> walks in like tiptoey. Terrible. Bring this guy okay. everywhere with you. <laughs> Unfortunately, he he has the magic. So yes, I bring him everywhere. He's got style. I like him. Not the kind of style you need when you're trying to be incognito. Mm -hmm. Just kind of teeth clenched in Tamlin's direction. I think we should head upstairs. That seems to be where the party is. Mm. Ah, oh, boy. We don't need to wear those little booties you, you have on when you're at a crime scene, do we? Depends on how deep in they are, I guess. We'll find out. We head upstairs. Okay. Uh, two of you head upstairs, and uh, uh, Tamlin, you uh, head over to... In, uh, to listen in on the the conversation um we'll start with that a bit uh kind of what you're getting here uh but you you walk up and you hear the um the man speaking with him who you can see has a uh detective's badge uh pinned to his uh or shield uh pinned to his um uh, or clipped to his uh, belt and uh he is sitting across from them um with a notepad and taking down notes as he asks them questions and you catch him mid conversation he says <clears throat> now uh mr austin i understand this is difficult but i just need you to go through last night one more time with me um just so i have all the details straight and the uh, uh the husband uh, sits up and says right um we were out at dinner. We went to La Taverna. Um, George and Stacy were in good spirits. Uh, we had a few drinks. 
um, had our entrees. Um, we had plans to uh, go to a another small uh, tavern down down the street, and but George said that he and Stacy were going to head back to the house, and um, we didn't think too much of it. Uh, and we didn't see them again that night, and then this morning we were coming for our Sunday tennis match, and we came in, and it was quiet, and they weren't making coffee, which they always are on Sunday morning, and so we called out for them, and that's when Alice went upstairs, and she saw the bodies. I'm sorry. Uh, and the uh, detective says, it's all right, it's all right. Um, so you didn't see them again, you didn't hear from them between... After they sang goodnight at the restaurant, you said lots of earned. Do you remember about what time that was? Uh, it must have been 8 30, 9 o'clock. I, d I don't remember exactly. We'd had a few bottles at the time. Um, and the detective takes a few notes from that, um, and you see him from over his shoulder, uh, Tamlin, scratching. Uh, uh, La Taverna, and he, like, circles it a couple of times. Um, he says, right. Uh, I think that's all I need right now. Um, thank you for your time. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, if anything else comes up, um, or anything else comes to mind, uh, anything suspicious, or anyone you saw uh, that night, just uh, give me a call. And the man gives a nod, and... Uh, the detective begins to escort them out of the house. Um, do you anything from uh, Tamlin that you uh, want to do during this? Um, it wouldn't. It would. The move uh, read a bad situation wouldn't have applied here, would it? Uh, let me see. I don't think read a bad situation work. Read a person, uh, which I'll. I'm going to carry over that anything Savannah has it into yeah, the game yeah. we can we can continue to okay. do so um so i don't think read a bad situation works uh because that's more yeah threats and things okay. like that then if you were trying to read a person that might work though i'll i'll try to read the read the husband and wife if possible okay um go yes. ahead and roll plus sharp right. Ooh. <laughs> Oh my god. How did oh Oh because I rolled with tough. Rolled with tough, okay. yeah. That's not the right uh not the right skill. Yeah, let's try that again. <laughs> Still not much a better. Fail. Still a fail. Okay. I'm like, I can't possibly roll two on <laughs> Uh Okay, so on a misc, ask anyway, but be prepared for the worst. Um <laughs> so you can go ahead and ask a uh, ask one question um, right. from that list. Jeez, I'm way off. Way off. I can't click the right buttons here. Read Sorry. A person. There it is. Uh, character telling the truth. Character telling the truth. And you're asking specifically to what you heard the husband uh, yeah. saying? Yep. Okay. Um I think from here's what I'll give you. You're you're watching the conversation, and I think, uh, I mean, they seem very genuine in their their affectations. Uh, but the detective kind of turns away, and you're still kind of relatively invisible. There, nobody's even looking at you. Um, and you see the um, he kind of gives a bit of space between the husband and the wife, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Austin, as he is referred to them as, um, and the wife. Uh, kind of leans over and you hear her whisper to the husband and say uh, honey should we tell him about uh, the way they were behaving do you think that's and the husband holds up a hand and says I don't think that's important well uh, it's leave them their bit of privacy if we can um, and she nods and uh, they kind of with arms around each other begin to walk out of the house okay duly noted Okay. We'll head upstairs. Uh, the two of you upstairs, 
uh, head around the corner. There's a there's a hallway, and you can hear conversation and uh, uh, noise down the hall. And uh, you reach the end to where uh, it appears to lead into the the master uh, bedroom on the second floor, kind of off to the uh, uh, one wing of the house. Um, and you head through the doors, and there's a little kind of seating area off the uh, doorway to the the bedroom, and then there's the main uh, bed uh, sleeping area. Um, and this whole area has been uh, there are sections of the carpet that have been covered to prevent contamination, uh, but you can still see through the tarps and uh, and on the bed itself, uh, there is blood everywhere. Um, it looks like uh, it. Based on your knowledge, uh, it, it it looks like something very violent uh, was done this room. There's blood spewn across the uh, strewn across the bed. The so the sheets are soaked through. It looks like they've been actually pulled off. It's just the mattress at this point, um, but the sheets soaked completely through into the mattress, which is also like just stained uh, in a jagged sort of crimson pattern, uh, and that pattern extends out to the floors and then the the walls. Uh, and there's even like some spatter markings across the ceiling. Um, it's pretty grisly. Uh, you don't see the bodies. It looks like those have been picked up by, uh, uh, by the uh, investigators at this point, and probably transported back to the station. Um, but you can see, kind of get an idea of what happened. Uh, there are a couple CSI technicians in the room. It looks like they're kind of packing up their equipment um, at this point, and some of them are beginning to leave. Uh, they see the two of you, um, and you see one of them kind of gives a strange look. Like, they don't really know how to respond to you uh, being there. Um, and one uh, uh, sort of younger man looks probably about, like, late 20s uh, that has a his pack uh, on his shoulder, slung, slung up on his shoulder, uh, says, um, Can I help you? We can help you, kid. Who, who are you? Love your pay grade. I think it's time you uh, take a step out. Um, hmm. I'm going to have you roll to... Manipulate? Manipulate, yeah. It's a nine. That's good. Uh, but on a nine, so it's a mixed success, uh, they'll do it, but only if you do, the, uh, do something for them right now to show that you mean mm -hmm. it. Um, you're asking them to leave so that you can... Yeah. Go into the room. So um, he kind of looks I'm gonna at. I'm going to look. I'm going to look around, find the station where they have the PPE, uh, the personal prote protection equipment, and like slip on the booties, put on some gloves. Okay. Like, I'm not going to contaminate anything. So I know what I'm doing. <laughs> showing a bit of like uh, some, some protocol. Um, mm -hmm. And he looks and sees uh, and sees you beginning kind of like just, just doing your thing, not really paying much mm -hmm. attention to him. And he sighs and says, uh, "All right, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm kind of new here, so I, I didn't recognize you. Um, we've mostly completed our sweep, so just have at it. Um, we, we've uh, heard that there's some uh, hinky things going on here. Uh, find anything unusual, out of place? Yeah, a lot. I mean, lots of stuff out of place. Kind of like gestures back towards the room. Says, did you just get here?'" Just walked in. Right. Um, you're lucky. Because uh, I've, I've been here for past six hours now. It was not a good scene to walk in on. Um, mm. Just pieces everywhere. Mm. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, they don't really prep you for this kind of stuff in s school. Uh, yeah, it was bad. <clears throat> There is the elastic snap of a rubber glove as uh, Haruto starts walking. And it all comes with experience, so Rat. buckle up for a really wild ride. Right. Can I ask you something, kid? Okay. When you were looking around, there's a lot of blood. There's a lot of body parts, a lot of bodily fluids. Did you see anything animalistic? Yeah, I mean that. You can see there's any kind of gestures over towards like the the bed frame and says there's some scratch marks on it. Um, we think it might have been some kind of animal. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I don't really know how an animal got into the house and upstairs, but I don't, my boss told me that, I mean, he did his sweep and that's, it seems like what we're going with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think a person could do something like that to another person. It, I mean, I can't, that's gotta be what it is. It's gotta be like a, like a bear or something. I don't, I don't know. Never let anyone tell you what to think, kid. Right. Right. Thanks. You seem smart. You seem like you know what you are talking about. So, do you think of anything else? And she hands him a card. Give me a call. Okay. Um, what, is it? what does your card say? <laughs> uh, Jesse Kelly, private detective. And then there's like some sigil, like runes on it that okay. anybody in the business would in the understand. Business. Yeah. Okay. Looks at it and says, oh. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, if, I guess if you're consult, I, I, are you consulting on the investigation or? You had a long day, kid. Pats him on the shoulder. Why don't you go get yourself a coffee? Okay. Oh, thanks. And he kind of tucks it into his uh, front pocket and looks over his shoulder one last time as he heads down the hall and down the stairs, leaving uh, the two of you alone in the room. Um, for a moment before uh, mm-hmm. Tamlin catches up. Yeah. I'm going to, I guess, start investigating this mystery. Okay. So just looking around, taking uh, mm-hmm. taking in all, everything that you see. Okay. Um, I guess if you're... Yikes. That's very good. <laughs> you know uh, what I do, Slick. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta <try>. uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a it's a twelve. So that's a full success. So you get to ask mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff. I get to ask two general questions or one specific question. Mm-hmm. Uh, since this is a one shot, I'm just gonna ask: uh, Do I know what did this? Have I seen this before? Okay. Um, you you begin to look over the room and kind of from based on your experience, kind of put the pieces together literally uh you you kind of see the the markings where you imagine like a uh a larger body part must have like the blood pooled on the floor there mm-hmm. must have been like a piece here and and judging by the the large markings on the floor and the way they are scattered um it kind of falls in line with what the csi was saying that mm-hmm. probably something strong uh yeah. pulled this creature pulled these these people apart essentially um Based on the information you have here, you could have encountered something like this before. Um, mm. I think something something bestial, uh, something corporeal comes to mind. Um, without further information, uh, I think you're you have a few things. Like I think you've encountered things like this, cryptids and other beasts, mm-hmm. bestial creatures. Um, but this is something that was here to either feed or just to destroy um, mm-hmm. based on what, what you're seeing. Uh, and based on that information in your prior experience, um, you can almost be certain that it's going to happen again until this thing is caught. Cool. Uh, she's going to pull out a Fujifilm camera and start taking Polaroids Okay. of uh, specific things that she's going to put up on a cork board and draw strings with later. Gotcha. Gotcha. Harto has his phone and he's already taking photos of it and he just looks over to her. You're so retro. Click, click, click. <laughs> uh, at this point, Tamlin uh, rejoins you, but Harto, if there's anything you want to do, too. Um... Honestly, it's just to look around, see if their forensics team has missed anything. Maybe like under the bed or like the glass is on the inside. That means that it was broken from outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what might be a good one. I, I think it that, that to me sounds like just like another investigative mystery. But let me see. I don't think read a bad situation. Yeah, I'm just gonna have you roll plus sharp again for investigative mystery just to see if you gather anything. You're just looking for inconsistencies. Five. A five. <laughs> uh. Room seems clear. 
I mean, it, there's a lot of stuff that's like if furniture was moved to a part, there's no broken windows or anything. Um, there are scratch marks like on the bed frame and on the on the wall. Um, you don't, I mean, I think you walk around, you don't notice anything that they might have missed. It seems like a pretty thorough sweep. Um, I think the uh, the only thing that ends up happening with a five, I feel like I just got to do something. Uh, you... Uh, at one point kind of is step around the side of the bed and you hear kind of like a squish under your foot and then you look down and uh, you realize like some of the some of the uh, uh, the sheets that they put down have kind of separated and your your foot's wrapped but it's just like in a puddle uh, or in a very saturated portion of the floor with with blood it's a good thing I put on the booties it's a good thing I put on the booties <laughs> Uh, but Tamlin, you're in there too now. Um, I'll give one other thing to uh, Jesse because uh, I just thought about it. Uh, you do look with your with your twelve. Um, the markings on the bed, uh, the scratches that the CSI tech uh, kind of pointed out to you, uh, you see long, kind of serrated looking uh, scratch marks across the side of the bed. And I think that's the only thing that, that leaves you kind of a little bit puzzled because I don't think you can immediately think of anything that has has claws like that. Um, mm -hmm. But it had to be some sort of claw uh, and it had to be something pretty big around like human, human sized, yeah, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, and sharp. Uh, I mean, the, the cuts themselves on this like uh, uh, metal bed frame uh, mm -hmm. carve in like like a set, like uh, like half a centimeter or so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, this house is it in the middle of the neighborhood on the outside? Uh, I think it is in. It's no, it's near the front of the neighborhood. These houses are so far away from each other. Okay. Um, but it is like, it's probably the second house, uh, mm -hmm. off the road. Uh, but even then, it's probably a a few hundred yards. Uh, yeah. In just because they are all these houses are set far mm -hmm. back from the road, a lot of space from each other, rolling hills and some like trees and like, kind of forestation in between. Okay. Uh, well, they said that, well, privately, the man and, man and the wife, Mr. and Mrs. Austin, had said that something about they were acting funny, but they did not tell the police officer. The husband shushed the wife and said they shouldn't say anything about it. They had mm -hmm. gone to dinner the night before, obviously, and left out that detail. My apologies. Acting funny hmm. seems quite odd. This was some sort of creature attack. Why would that make any sense? Why would that happen? Maybe they knew it was coming. Hmm. Maybe they, one of them is the creature, or was the creature? Well, looks like we need to have a conversation with our uh, good old morg technician. Goes into his jacket to see if he has credentials for morg technician. It's alright. I got it. Oh. I'm gonna, uh, f I have a, f she has a flip phone, so she flips it open. <laughs> And uh, dials uh, her good old friend, Dr. Canvas, back. Yes. Um, who I'm assuming uh, is probably uh, uh, works for the police department at one, at least yeah. in one of their uh, yeah. stations. Because uh, we're mm -hmm. kind of in like the northern, uh, like the Division Two. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so I think you give him a call and um, there's a little bit of fumbling with the phone. And then you just hear, hey, yes, yes, yes. Hey, Duck, how you doing? Oh, Jesse. Oh, pleasant to hear from you again. How, how are you doing today? Well, I'm at a scene of a crime that seems to be committed by one of our uh, interesting uh, perpetrators. Uh, and he saying. kind of, you kind of hear like him getting close to the phone and a bit of like, mm -hmm. uh, like breathing into the, uh, the, the receiver and says, oh, some sort of cryptid or... Or beast, or creature, or specter of some kind. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the uh, the case at four two four two Acorn Drive. Are you uh, you been a, gonna be presiding over this case? 
Oh, uh, four, two, four. Oh, uh, is that, uh, the, 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 uh, the Buckhead, uh, neighborhood, um, I wasn't planning, like, if you need me to, I can take lead on that one. I was going to leave it to one of my, uh, assistants, but... You're a doll, Doc. Uh, yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll adjust the paperwork. Um, I'll be seeing you soon, then. Yeah, I'll bring some, uh, sherry for you. Ah, wonderful. Uh, see you then. Alright, bye-bye. Look, we have an inn. We should probably get out of here before they start asking questions. Uh, in Tam Tamlin will try to, like, do a sweep for magic just to see kind of if there's, like, a whoa, you know. Something. Gotcha. Do you have a move or something for that, or just, uh... I do not. It'll just have to be magic. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that is... Perfectly doable. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do a use magic then. Okay. Hey, stop it. Weird. Nice. Nice. Ooh, 12. 12. Uh, okay, so it works without issue. Choose your effect. Uh, your effect being kind of between like. Uh, an observation of another time or place you're kind of trying to observe yep. now with like seeing magic um yep. so yeah that works uh you you stand there and you bring out your pocket watch again uh begin mm -hmm. to mutter an incantation uh and as you do and your eyes kind of glaze over and you see out into the uh the ether around you um you do not see any signs of magic. Um, you don't get the impression that anything that happened here, or you, I'll give you this, if it was a magical <clears throat> creature or some sort of summoned uh, entity of some kind, uh, you would typically expect to pick up some kind of like residue or um, markings that there was something spectral or uh, supernatural involved in this. Um, no indication anything supernatural uh, was involved here. And, and as he's waving the watch around, you notice that the watch doesn't have any guts to it. It's just a lid. But he's, like, looking through it at everything. And uh, he snaps it closed and puts it back in his vest pocket. And, hmm. Clear of magic. Must be some more mundane type creature. Or a, you know. And he, he looks over at, uh, uh, how do you pronounce it, RJ? Haruto. Haruto looks at. You could just say Haru. It's easy. Haru. Okay, looks at Haru and it's like um, glances or you know something more monstrous. Um. Are you getting any feels, Haru? Wet socks. That's about it. Gross. All right, let's blow this joint. Uh, as you are heading down the steps, um, you, you're beginning to head out the front door and you hear a throat clear, um, and, uh, coming out of another room from like the back towards the kitchen, uh, you see the detective, uh, we've been told before, Detective Wallace, um, older man, uh, or kind of middle-aged, um, uh, very thick kind of square jaw, uh, buzz cut, um, looks over the two of you uh haru and and jesse um your effect still being there uh tamlin uh and says what are you doing here you're not part of my investigation looks over at haru <laughs> he's the one with credentials <laughs> you're the one with the pi bit <laughs> But I have to be hired for that to be. Shh. <laughs> um, yes. Slowly pulling hand out of jacket. Uh, I'm sorry. What was his question? Who are you, people? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said you're sorry, not part of his investigation. Right. I'm sorry. We haven't met before. My name is Jesse Kelly. All right. Am I supposed to know who you are? Apparently not, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. We'll catch you on the flip side. This is an active crime scene. You're just waltzing around in here. What? Jesse Kelly. What's your name, sir? 
Haru, I'm her plucky young sidekick. Snaps a finger. Just kidding. And he's going to, hopefully it works, go into his pocket for the forensics badge. Okay. Uh, you hold out the, you hold him out the forensics badge and he uh, scans it for a minute. I might have you roll for a second, but I do want to. But he, as he's holding this, he looks to Jesse and says, "Do you have any sort of cred- credentials or badge yourself, ma'am?" Uh, yeah. No, she hands him a her one of her um one of her cards. <laughs> her uh, PI cards. Yeah. And takes that. Uh. <laughs> I so I don't think he's looking too close to your card. I'm not going to make you roll to manipulate on that because mm-hmm. you're not trying to put yourself off as being. In your in his employer, putting herself off as me and hers, and he looks at it and goes, "Ah, oh, shit! Who let you in here?" It is my job to be in here. I, uh, you know, I, I think it's the real purpose is uh, figuring out what is happening here and uh, who is to blame. All right, that's all well and good, <laughs> but that's not the way this works, and I'm sure you know that. Who hired you yeah, to be I'm... here? As far as I know, my office didn't. Extend Tam- and work, works his way around behind the guy and then just like creepily they can see him so he pseudo creepily eases up and just in his ears like it's okay they're good people and tries to tries to uh, magic him give him just the, let, let it be like oh these are good badges okay <laughs> so you're trying to influence him with magic yeah, yeah. trying to psychic paper the shit out of this guy yeah <laughs> jedi mind trick kind of uh thing. yeah uh that's that's good with me uh go ahead and roll to uh use magic then one of these will go bad and that'll be funny okay <laughs> hey speaking <laughs> of uh, it's a partial that's success a, that's okay. partial success so uh what is your glitch uh, short duration. Okay. Like, like literally, I say that he will say okay, and I will like shove them out the door. Yeah. So you you say that, and you see him kind of, he like twitches and like looks over his shoulder for a second, but he doesn't see Tamlin there, and hands. Uh, I think he he hands your badge back, uh, uh, Haru, and he pockets the card. He says, maybe there's some mix up, mix up here. I'm gonna clear this with the brass and make sure that. We're all on the same page because I didn't know that there was a consult mm. being brought in. Mm. Yes, well, you know, like paperwork gets messed up. Uh, if you need anything, you have my number. Give me a call. Yeah, and if you find anything, you call me. And he brings out a card and he hands it to you. He says, mm-hmm. "Just let me do my job." Of course, I won't get any weight. Nice, start scooting them. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, detective. <laughs> scoot, scoot, scoot. <laughs> Uh, you all uh, scoot down the driveway and uh, back to, I guess, Haru's rental car. Or no, you've got your beat up uh, hearse. Uh, hearse. No, Sabrina left. She she, she left. I'd have to call oh, her. To get her yeah, back. but uh, Jesse's got a clunker too. Yeah, the station wagon. Yeah. Uh, so you head back to your cars, and I think just as you're trying to like get away, you just hear a shout from the house. Like, hey, wait a minute! And uh, you see the detective kind of jogging out onto the the yard <laughs> as you all drive away. Uh, perfect. So where are you going to convene? Uh, to- I guess the question is, do we want to question the Austins more, or do we want to go to the morgue? Let's not slang 101 this and split up, gang. Um, <laughs> I'd love splitting up, but sure. <laughs> Honestly, I think the Austins might not have a lot of information for us. Mm-hmm. They just know that the um, the victims were acting weird. We could mm-hmm. go down to the morgue and check out what the bodies look like. Yeah. Uh, I will ask, uh, do you guys have any uh, contacts that you could talk to, see if there's any chatter about any creatures out in the uh, wilderness coming in on these territories? Boy, do I. Um, You know, I just recently picked this guy up, so haven't had much chatter with anyone. I I do what I do. I, I don't really know anyone. 
<laughs> he looks he looks a little abashed. Well, why don't y'all get on your smartphones and figure out and see if there's any animal sightings nearby. Does Jesse not have a smartphone? It's a flip phone. <laughs> Got like an old Nokia. Uh, yes. Perfect. <laughs> It's one of the new flip phones that does have internet, but she's not sure how to work it. Okay. Or maybe she is. She just chooses not to. You don't know. She, uh, by the way, has a, uh, in the front seat, there is a small cooler that's just full of, like, uh, iced coffees and Red Bulls and stuff. And she just cracks one open and starts drinking it. <laughs> Wonderful. Tamlin, like, like, again, creepily, his head appears over and he looks down. May I, um, a coffee? Yeah, why not, kid? Just uh, don't get too hyper. He takes Passes it. Passes one off. He, he drips it off on the carpet, unbeknownst to Jesse, like, because he doesn't want to drip on himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Pulls a, a kerchief out and wipes all the uh, the dew off of it before it <laughs> crack. <laughs> Start uh, sipping. Uh, Jesse asked you guys to look and see if there are any animal sightings in the area on your smartphones as we drive to the morgue. Cool, will do. His phone is stupid. Tamlin's is stupid big. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's almost mm -hmm. tablet sized. And... Perfect. Uh, so let me see. Never a good roll for check your phones for something. I guess investigate a mystery <laughs> is probably going to be the closest. Um, oh yeah, because googling the monster's name is on the list, and I think this is close enough to that. Um, so you're looking for animal sightings in the uh, Buckhead, greater Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll say one of you can roll for the investigation and the other one can attempt to help if needed um, since you guys are essentially doing the same thing. I'll give Tamlin that plus one. Oh, okay. okay. I'm only well, plus one to look up. And know I have to roll, so. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll be assisting because. Yeah, okay. so uh, Tamlin, <laughs> roll sharp and then we'll see if you need the assistance. Hey. Assistance would be good, actually. Um, potentially Push it to the 10. Yeah. Let's see. It's sharp, correct? Uh, I think it's cool. Oh, sick. Yeah, cool. No. I got it. Uh, okay. So I think that you just open yourself up to any potential blowback um, on that. But, I mean... I guess maybe he opens up like a phishing uh, email, and you know you gotta deal with that <laughs> later on. Uh, anyway, you, yeah, you, uh, the two of you, uh, you, it's a it's a full success though with a ten, so you're able to um, ask two general questions or one specific question. Uh, if you want to go with the like animal sightings in Buckhead, uh, I will count that as a specific question, and we will. Let's do that. Roll forward with that. Okay. Um, so specific, uh, specifically any an uh, animal sightings in the area, uh, I think you initially don't get a lot of results. Um, it's a lot of like uh, next door, like I saw somebody's dog uh, and or strange cat nearby or stuff like that. And you have to like sift through all of that. Um, you do get into probably again on like the uh, one of the, the like neighborhood like forums um where uh somebody uh in the uh i'm going to continue to forget the name of this neighborhood until the day i die garden hills uh neighborhood which is where you are currently are leaving right now um somebody in the garden hills area mentions that uh on friday night uh early saturday morning uh that their uh, mailbox was knocked over um and there's a picture and it's like a one of those brick mailboxes uh and it's just like smashed in um uh and they you know there's some talk there like some like hooligans or something somebody must have been driving like a like a, a, a maniac um but it's in the animal uh section because uh somebody says that there was uh, or there's there's a few more pictures and a few more posts and uh, they said there's blood on the mailbox um and there's like some close-up pictures of some bricks uh with some dried blood looking on it and they assume that something must have uh, run into their mailbox or maybe somebody hit an animal and then swerved into it and there's a lot more chatter like that um uh, but you get that, and then there's one other posting um, 
that the two of you find uh, that somebody asks a question uh, on like a uh, on a local forum again near the same area uh, about roof dam like animals causing roofing damage. Um, and there's a picture of uh, their roof where you can see a section of like the shingles on the roof have been like torn off um, and like scattered across the yard. Uh, and there's like a couple of patches on the roof where like the shingles have essentially been like ripped off of the roof. Um, and they're asking like what kind of animal might have caused that? Should I call animal control? Something like that. This is what we got. And Tamlin like reaches around. And hey, hey, this. hey, I'm driving here. <laughs> Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> how? When was the first incident? Like how long ago? Uh, those were both recently. Those were both within the last day. Mm. Seems like something's moving around. Something mm. big. Interesting. Could it, could it be something passing through and just happened to catch our people? I don't think so. I think this is something that's we're going to have to put down. It's not going to stop until it's been stopped. You know what I mean? Great. Hand back the tablet to Tamlin. Hey, Tam. Yes? And Jesse, to an extension. Do you know if the victims had any other relatives living in that house? Any staff? My thinking. Did we see anything that would indicate that? Um, you. You did not see anything that would indicate that. You did the the photos that were on the walls uh, were all just of the two of them. Um, maybe some like older relatives or some older photos, but uh, it didn't seem like there were any kids in the house. Um, and uh, I, it's a very pretty big house but you didn't get the impression that it was like they had any staff or anything on hand it was just kept by the two of them also retroactively could i roll to see if i spotted any cameras oh uh yeah yeah no you could um let's do a i guess it'd be sharp um be either read a situation or investigate a mystery something along that line six <laughs> Oh. Nope. Nope. No cameras. Mm. The other question we have to think about is were they targeted? Or was this a chance killing? <clears throat> were they an easy mark? Is the thing we're hunting smart enough to differentiate that? The door wasn't busted. There were no windows busted. This thing went in this house to kill them. This wasn't a rage. This thing is intelligent. Tell that to all the blood splatter. Efficiency. Haru falls silent. Guess we won't know if it was eating them or just shredding them until we get there. All right, now, when we get to the morgue, uh, uh, Dr. Canvasback, he's, uh, he's a bit of a talker. So don't get him talking. If he starts telling a story, divert, okay? Sure. All right. uh, and around that time, do you pull up outside of the uh, Buckhead... Uh, a van, uh, uh, I almost said Savannah, um, <clears throat> uh, Atlanta Police Department, uh, and head inside. Uh, I think uh, Doctor Canvasback is probably already like, I don't know, left your names or something to let the uh, mm -hmm. to let them know that you were coming. Uh, so the uh, staff at the front desk of the police uh, station uh, just points you down the hall, um, mm -hmm. gives you your visitors badges. Um, signs you in. Uh, you head down the hall and come up to the uh, 
uh, mortician's office or the, the morgue uh, and uh, you hear like a little bit of music playing inside as you come through the door and there's like a little bit of like classical music playing uh, over a, a speaker in the corner um, line of uh, a wall of the, the um, morgue uh, drawers uh, on one side uh, and just sort of a chill in the air and that smell of uh, formaldehyde uh, and the uh, older uh, British gentleman uh, sitting, uh, standing on the other side of a uh, gurney where there is uh, a tarp over a collection of objects uh, essentially um, and he says oh uh, Jesse and Guests as well. Welcome, welcome. Uh, please come in. Uh, please just don't touch anything. Um, uh, it's good to have visitors. I so rarely get to speak to anyone during the workday. Um, how are you? How are you? Uh, doing just great. And she's gonna pull out uh, the the bottle for him that she had pulled up. And when you guys, when we left the car, she went in the trunk, and there's just like cases of different kinds of alcohol in there. So like every time we go over a bump, there's just that sound of the rattling. Uh, but she uh, hands it over. Beautiful. Not day, I'll tell you. I'll need this after today. Um, he sets it in the corner, uh, comes back, and you can see uh, he, as he puts on his uh, uh, gloves uh, the the mess of, of body parts essentially under the the uh, the tarp or the. Uh, the blanket that he's laid down, he pulls them up and it's as grisly as you might expect. He says, I was going over this one for you. Um, messy business. Uh, I fathom again. I don't even want to guess uh, what might have caused something like this. Um, this puzzle may take me a bit to, to put together. Uh, but this is, um, and he gestures to the, uh, the two gurneys in front of him. He says, uh, as far as I can sort out right now, George and Stacy Winthrop, the victims from, uh, last night. Mm. Uh, I don't have much to tell you here other than that whatever did this was enraged or... Well, brutal. Uh, bones shattered, uh, ligaments ripped apart like cheap tissue paper. Um, he gestures to the remnants of an arm. You see long serrations in the uh, little bits of flesh that we have left. Uh, all look like claw markings of some kind. You'd think uh, an animal or a bear attack, something of that size or caliber. Um, Though I can't imagine a bear finding its way into uh, Buckhead. Um, the strange part, though. No bite marks, as far as I can tell. Uh, mostly claws ripping, tearing. Um, and I haven't had a chance to look over Mrs. Winthrop uh, with any length, but from my initial report with uh, George here, most everything is present. Uh, with the exception of one organ, uh, the heart. Uh, can't find it. I don't know if it was left behind by the technicians, or I'm going to send them for another sweep, but it um, seems deliberate. I'm noticing signs near the ribcage, uh, trauma uh, indicating something sort of grabbing and sort of pulling apart violently. Um, Given the line of work you're in, safe to say that maybe something was um, looking for a valentine. Uh, Doc, could you give Mrs. Winthrop a quick once over, see if she still has her heart too? Right, right. Uh, and he begins to look over the body, uh, the, the pieces that he has there. Um, uh, Eddie investigating while he is doing that. Or are you guys just standing back? There's just the snap of rubber gloves again. And like Haru picks up a pair of forceps and just kind of pulls back a bit of the skin to look. Mm. Uh, Tamlin, could you yeah. do a uh, once over with your magic hoodoo, hoodoo, you yeah. do? 
Um, he he waits for a second. He says, "We could, if we had time, we could seance, speak with them." What time of day is it? Is it morning? Uh, no, it's probably mid to late afternoon at this point. Oh, okay. How long will that take? How long would it take? I assume that's a big magic if you want to talk to someone. Uh, let's see. Communicate with something. Uh, essentially, you'd be like summoning a spirit. Um, I mean, I don't think that necessarily has to be big magic. Oh, okay. Then, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, he'll, Tamlin will walk over and he'll, the, while the guy is looking at Mrs. Tamlin, he'll actually put his hand on the guy's head and, and gloves, Tamlin, gloves. Can't magic with the gloves. And, uh, and he'll, he'll try to, you know, talk to speak with dead, basically. Okay. Uh, so you begin the incantation, uh, yep. there, um, and you see uh, Dr. Canvas back kind of looking over his shoulder and, and uh, says, oh, I won't interfere. And he uh, heads back and, and kind of looking through the body. And then he stops and he says, as I expected, uh, I can't find it here either. So once I'd say maybe a happenstance too uh, intentional. The pattern. Yes. Aru, mm. what creatures could uh, eat a hot? I want to say some sort of were creatures, but uh, let me roll for that first. Uh, yeah, do an investigative mystery. Yeah, shop it is. It's not my best stat. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, you can ask one general question. Um. Or just one question from the questions list if you don't want to. So what sort of creature is it? Um, covers that. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with that. Um, so based on what you're looking at here and uh, knowing that it consumes hearts, some lore has uh, werewolves or other or werebeasts um, have exhibited that kind of behavior. Uh, there are other beasts, cryptids, spirits that are known to do that as well based on what you have here so far it's probably some kind of uh some kind of corporeal uh cryptid or, or other um uh cursed uh creature um but yeah you, it's yeah there's a list that you could go over of things that could uh you're you're, you're on the right track with uh with something like a werewolf though i think it's it's a safe assumption um based on what you're looking at. I think the only thing that gets you with the werewolf is that the lunar cycle is not right. Is not this. present, right. Yeah. I mean, it could be any sort of werebeast. It could be, honestly, anything just like looking to eat something like a monster delicacy. It could also be like, I read a report once. There's some crazy doctor out in the backwoods stealing people and out of tents harvesting their organs to put them inside himself to live forever. Gross. But no bites. No so. bites. Plus, it's a lot of work to get in someone's chest or... Something this strong. Has to be beastie. Hmm. And then, so, Damlin's gonna yeah. try to speak with Dead. Alright, so the, uh, you, I think you complete your your ritual and uh, bring out your um, your kind of arcane uh, focuses foci uh, and uh, stand next to the mostly intact head of uh, George Winthrop um, and there's a flicker to the fluorescent light bulb above the uh, the table and a further chill through the air um, as uh, you see the there is this like coalescing of frost that pours uh, over the edge of the room and kind of up onto the table. And then that that vapor, this this mist, uh, kind of reforms into the essentially the bust of a uh, human 
form uh, just kind of emerges from the table. Um, Do I have to roll? Uh, oh yeah, you have to roll a bit. Uh, use magic. Uh, that's okay. a. I thought you had already rolled. I'd totally forgotten that you hadn't. <laughs> okay. You could have totally gotten away with that at this point. <laughs> I, I, I was like, well, he's letting us uh, do this. Either way, this is going to happen. It's just how oh, bad yeah. you roll. I, I know really it's going to be great. Here. It's going to be great. Okay, stay honest, internet. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I appreciate it. Oh, Woo! Fuck. perfect. Tamlin's well, on fucking roll. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, the spirit forms and you see this kind of like you, you summon the, the, uh, the specter from the other side. And I think that part's easier. And then like the maintaining it and the keeping it contained and under your, your control, that's the more difficult part. Uh, and you see it sort of begin to, uh, to emerge from the body, but you keep it contained and you see this this look of of kind of mournful like pain uh forms across his face and then he looks up at you uh what do you ask <laughs> oh uh hello mr winthrop i um what shredded you if you don't mind we're uh, trying to figure that out the whole time he's got his hand still on the guy's head. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, he's, you know, he gives you, he gives you a, a strange look and he says, I don't know. I had never seen anything like it before. Uh, uh, and can they see this? Yeah. So I'm looking and I'm like, uh, uh, her, 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 um, can uh, you uh, describe it? Harry, bestial, two legs, six legs. Uh, legs. He, uh, the the the. I think the face kind of twitches and like in a flash, it's like looking back at you, um, almost immediately. Uh, and you see the the face sort of thinking for a second, and then says, "I thought it was a man at first standing at the foot of the bed. My wife began to scream and I reached for the revolver in my drawer. And then pain. It had claws and its eyes like they were glowing. They were too large for its face and like a cat's. I heard it growling, but I, and I felt calm. But there was a song and I looked to my wife and I said, I love you. And then nothing. Just something breaking. Can you tell me what made you go home that night? Uh, he, he thinks for a moment uh, and says, I don't know. Uh, he says Stacy and I had been arguing but as we walked into the restaurant that same song and we smiled and, and everything was wonderful again and We left early to enjoy each other's company. Had you seen this person before? This person at the end of your bed? Was he at the restaurant? Shakes his head says, not a person. As it got closer, it was a I had never seen anything like it. A beast. A... It 
was terrifying. Do you remember the song? No. No, I couldn't place it. Hmm. GB, I think you're muted if you said something. Oh, uh, I was whispering. Um, ah. uh, do, can you remember it now? Like even a few notes? He, uh, home, he, he thinks for a moment. He says, it didn't so much have notes. It was low, like a humming. I see. I can't remember, but it made me so happy. Well, you're at peace now. Go forth into the void and uh, spend some time with your wife. Uh, there, uh, if, if you dismiss the spell, uh, Tamla. If, if I'll take a quick look at uh, Harato and like any other questions, you give him a thumbs up. up. All right, and he's uh, he's uh, you know more to the rest, and he gives him a, a kiss on the head. <laughs> uh the 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 mist uh disperses in, in a in a puff kind of scattering to the edges of the room and it's gone uh and then from the other side of the room uh dr canvas back and uh looks up and says well that was something uh that reminds me of a time i was on safari in the oh, you know, uh further uh, doc, doc we got a we got a lot to work with right now we got to make sure this creature doesn't attack us again all right right hey, hey doc right. Do, do you know the restaurant these folks were at before the attack uh he says oh um and like uh, brings up a clipboard and flips through it the the detective's note said something about um, La Taverna. It's, oh, it's actually a really popular Greek restaurant uh, just uh, in the uh, central square, um, just off of uh, Garden Hills. It's a nice place. I've been there a few times. Um, if you go, you should uh, definitely uh, go for uh, tapas. I, I try as much as you can. Uh, and their wine selection is, is definitely... I hope you're going too- again. Uh, doc, 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 can you tell me about Detective Wallace? Is he someone that can be uh, greased, as they say? Wallace, um, he's, he's as straightforward as they come. Uh, I can't imagine a more reputable, uh, detective on the force. I sort of no nonsense. I, I really can't imagine him going yeah. too much for this sort of thing. Right, right. All right, well, if he asks, uh, you know, wasn't here. Right, right. I never saw anything. Uh, one other thing you should know. Um, I was doing a bit of... Uh, research into the into the case and trying to get some back uh, story on what was going on before I began my analysis and um, it appears there were two victims before this uh, similar that uh, they were with a different uh, division so it didn't come up right away but uh, two college students that were uh, found killed as well and um, I will extend some um, I'll, I'll extend a, a question to my colleagues in the um, greater metro area and find out whether their hearts are missing as well. Um, but it was purported to be an animal attack. Hmm. Thanks, Doc. If you, uh, if you get your hands on the report, just uh, send it over our way, huh? I will. I will. Should have it within the next few hours. Enjoy that bottle. She says as she slips out. He says, I will. Um, and the three of you leave. Um, mm-hmm. Head back to the head back to the car. A creature that can manipulate someone's feelings. A creature that perhaps feeds off of uh, affection. We'll have to see if uh, there's anything that correlates with the other incident. 
I mean, gruesome murder apart, that sounds rather romantic. Did you see how much blood was in that room? Yeah, the pieces, the parts, I get it, but still, you know, it's nice to have a tragic love. You know, I think after this case, we should uh, take a break, Tim. It's all right. He's got spirit. Yeah. He's a softie at heart. I can respect that. <laughs> GB laughs. Tamlin does. <laughs> um, would now be a good time for a break because I have a blue bath for after this. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to uh, suggest. Um, I just wanted to get an idea of where you guys were going, but we could decide that next time if you were, if you guys want to think about that on the break. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, and take a break. Uh, we will be back in a couple of minutes uh so everybody stay tuned i'm the one running the stream so i also realize that i have to be the one to get the break screen ready but uh we will see everyone <laughs> back in a uh in a little bit uh stay tuned and we will see you soon bye hey welcome back internet uh thanks for hanging out with us on our break um we're here playing some monster of the week uh with uh our motley crew here because uh, a bunch of people had other things to do but we're having a lot of fun um let's go ahead and get, jump back into it you have just left the uh the buckhead uh morgue's office um talk to your uh morticianer uh friend and have some good information to work on so uh what would you like to do i would like to use my move uh, my uh, the one of the weird basic moves uh, of trust your gut, okay. which is you roll to consult uh, and you roll weird. So I'm gonna roll weird. Okay. That is a zero. <laughs> what? That's uh, a seven. One plus six. What? Yeah. Why is it that? It should be a seven. <laughs> it didn't add in a modifier to it. Uh... Weird. I was like, that's impossible. <laughs> Uh yeah. So what do, do you have a weird stat? Or is your weird zero? My weird is zero. Okay. So oh, I that guess might... I didn't type in zero. Maybe that's why it's like. That's what probably why. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah, a seven, which is a mixed success. Um. Uh -huh. Also, don't forget, you guys do have luck points if you want to use them at any point, but okay. you're free to save them. Um. Yeah. Uh. So. so on it. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, he'll uh, on a seven through nine. The keeper will tell you a general direction to go. Take plus one forward to explore that. Okay. So you have a couple of things put in front of you right now. Um, you know that they were the the last place they were seen was at the or the last yeah the last place they were seen was at the La Taberna restaurant. Um, you uh, know that they were there with their um, friends. Um, the their their neighbors, the Austins, um, and uh, you know that there's another potentially another murder, uh, or another there are more victims out there uh, to ne connected to this. I think your gut is pointing you in the direction of the Austins. Cool. I got a feeling we have to go pay the uh, happy couple a visit. You know what I mean. Is it a gut feeling? Yes, it is. Hasn't been wrong yet, so why not? All right. Pull out of the parking lot, tires squealing, and roll out back to the Austins. <laughs> Haru's on Yelp looking up the restaurant, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Uh, perfect. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, I had, has very good Yelp reviews. Um, like a four point eight out of five stars, and like eleven hundred reviews. Uh, like pretty. It's been open for a couple years now. Um, it's pretty pretty hopping place. Um, no no mention of murder. Uh, on any of the Yelp reviews, as far as you can tell. Five um, star murder. <laughs> Um, just they murdered the food yeah um so you head back to the uh uh to the neighborhood uh the garden hills area 
And uh, I'd say around this time, probably takes you about 45 minutes to get back there uh, in Atlanta traffic. Um, it's a Sunday, but still it's Atlanta. It's still clearing out from Thursday. Uh, so you, uh, I think the sun is, is beginning to set. It's getting a little uh, dark out, a little bit of a chill uh, coming through the air in this uh, February in the south. Um, you pull up. Uh, into the neighborhood and you can see there is still um, there's still police tape over the front doors of the Winthrop residence residence uh, and there is a patrol car uh, parked at the front of the neighborhood um, as you pass uh, I think you look towards the car and you can see uh, Ellie uh, is currently uh, sitting at the wheel and she kind of like shines a light towards your car and sees you and just like gives you a nod uh lets you through um and you head back towards the house uh to the right uh facing from the street of the uh winthrops um but still several hundred feet away uh the the austin residence um lights are on inside it appears that they're home um there's a car parked in the drive um mm -hmm. How would you like to approach? I want to thank you again, Lady Jessie, for stopping at the Circle K for uh, refreshment. I needed a refill anyways. It's fine. Uh, Haru. What's up? I've been told I can come off a bit intense. Do you want to start the questioning? I'm not really a people person. All right. Adjust her hat. I'll try not to shake him down too much. Uh, and I would like to uh, go up to the front door. Okay. So who's the good cop and who's the bad cop in this relationship? I I don't know any bad cops. I don't associate with bad cops. Oh. I would assume oh. that means she's saying you are the bad uh, officer. When you're interrogating someone, you split up and play good cop, bad cop. Well, you just grill them until they tell you what you need to know. That's the bad cop mentality. Okay, I got it. It's just kind of questioning as she... Uh, I could just, you know, make them tell us. Uh, that, That'll that be step two, I think. As you wish. Uh, all right, so you, you walk up the... Uh, remain the the remainder of the the drive and uh, up to the the steps to the front door. Um, you hit the doorbell and the loud chimes echo through the house. Um, and uh, the uh, the the trees kind of nearby kind of rustle slightly in the uh, late wind, sending up a, a flock of uh, crows uh, into the night sky. And the door opens and. Uh, uh, Miss Austin, uh, who you had seen previously, um, sort of uh, pokes her head out the door. Um, you can see there's a like a chain on the front door uh, that is still latched, and she opens it. And you can see her husband kind of standing back uh, near the uh, back from the threshold. And she says, "Can I help you?" She removes her hat. Uh, apologies for uh, coming so late, Miss. I am. Uh, my name's Jessie. Uh, and she's gonna hand over her card. Uh, I've been hired by the uh, AWS to uh, find out if I could uh, figure out where this creature is. This uh, we're thinking it's a bear, but I'm uh, here to speak to you since you were the last ones and you live so close. Um, uh, go ahead and roll a manipulate. <laughs> okay. You're very clearly trying to manipulate them. Yes, I am. Um, I'm going to give you... Well, uh, do you guys... Does anyone do anything to assist? I, I do or? have a plus one. Oh, you do? A forward. Yeah. That's right, because you're acting on your instinct. Perfect. That'll work. Yeah. So that's a... Eight? Eight. Eight. Um, so same deal as before. They will do it, but uh, mm -hmm. they need some sort of assurance um, first. Uh mm -hmm you've handed them the card she's kind of looking it over and she says um that's uh thank you for uh, coming by I, I 
I don't know what I could tell you. We, we told the police everything that we already know. Um, Though we are for, working... Go ahead. Except for how they were acting at the restaurant beforehand. Hmm? How... How do you know that? And he, he, he taps his head. <laughs> we are... Uh, Wait. We are working... Are you consulting with... Are you a psychic? <laughs> he takes a deep bow. <laughs> takes we... a step aside. <laughs> clearly <laughs> seeing that my services are no longer needed. <laughs> she says, we didn't know that the... The uh, APD was consulting. We were telling them they needed to consult with a psychic on this uh, because of the nature of the the violent crime. Uh, and and she, you can see she like closes the door for a second, opens it up, and says, "Please, please come in." Looks at Haru, <laughs> rolls eyes, walks out of the in. corner of his mouth. He just mutters, "Eccentrics." <laughs> okay, uh, walks <laughs> in. Uh, you walk in, and the the. Uh, husband and wife stand there and they, they close the door uh, behind you and the uh, two of them uh, or she kind of gestures towards the front room similar to at the uh, Winthrop residence and she says uh, please sit sit um, uh, as she looks to her uh, husband whose name I need to remember uh, <clears throat> Mark and says Mark will you um, will you get them some refreshments and we can discuss this uh, more, more thoroughly uh, and Mark nods and says, of course, uh, and heads back into the uh, kitchen. Um, and you all sit down in the, the front room. And she says, so what, what can I do to help? Um, it, it, anything, really. I've, I've watched some of this on uh, some uh, investigative uh, programs, and I have a, a, a bit of an idea how this works, but uh, I've nev obviously never done this in person. And then uh, Tamlin suddenly looks like, oh, crap. Um, you got to take the lead, bud. Oh, I, I, no, no, no. It, it, it's character, not not GB. Um, <laughs> it's like, well, we could, um, we could have a reading or we could. Why don't you first set the scene for us and maybe we can get a feel for what's going on. And my associates are uh, very perceptive and in tune with this world. Maybe they can pick uh, some uh, nuances out for us. Right, mm. right. Uh, uh, her uh, husband comes back in and uh, has um, probably a, a, a teapot and uh, a, a tray of, of uh, cups as well and sets it down and begins to or some for everybody uh and the uh, uh his his wife uh alice um, says all right um okay so we were we were at the restaurant uh well i'll start further back than that um we've known uh mark and uh, george and stacy for for a long time um been friends for 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 years uh, since since we moved here, and um, well, we were going out for dinner for uh, Valentine's Day weekend. Um, thought that that might um, help smooth things over a bit. Um, you see, uh, I didn't. We didn't tell the police this because they'll start getting into other things and thinking that this is some sort of. They'll think that there was something else going on here, and we don't want them reading too much into the the situation. Trying to think it's a bit a bit private, but um, but if you're in the uh, in the business, then of course we I know we need to be as honest with you to get a full reading of the situation as uh, possible. So, um, well, uh, George and Stacy were uh, how did you put it, honey? Uh, and uh, Mark uh, takes a sip of his drink and says, um, they were on the rocks, you could say. Right, right. Uh, they were having a bit of a, of a tiff. Uh, there had been talk about them separating for a while. Uh, things were strained between them. Um, well, we were bringing them out to dinner and, and thought maybe some time with friends 
might help on a romantic date. And, um, well, when they got there, they were, I mean, they were all over each other. It was actually almost indecent, uh, in a way, um, like newlyweds. It was odd. Uh, I, well, I didn't even want to guess what was causing it. Um, uh, Mark looks and says, well, I thought they were, you know, well, on dope or something like that. I figured there was some drugs involved. Uh, and, and, he, uh, and and Tamlin like like puts a hand up and he's like, "Tell me about the music." The music at the restaurant. The it was at the restaurant. Uh, it was, you know, standard fare and Greek music. Nothing. I don't know much about music, to be honest. Uh, Nothing romantic or pluck to your heartstrings. He says to the wife specifically. Uh, uh, Alice uh, looks. There's nothing particularly romantic about it. It's, uh, it's it's a bit jarring. I didn't really enjoy it that much. Kind of, uh, I actually it was a bit loud. I I was hoping they would turn it down a bit. I actually complained to the manager, and she said that that they would, and but and never did, as far as I could tell. And you know, it's anyway. Was it a live performance or recording? Um, I think there was a, a live band on the veranda, um, but it was on speakers throughout the rest of the restaurant. Hmm. Do you remember what they looked like at all? Um, no, not particularly. Uh, just a few musicians. I, I never saw them in person, to be honest. Um, why does it matter what the musicians looked like? Ugh. <laughs> looks to Tamlin. <laughs> Tamlin's like, um, well, I should not say anything, but I have spoken with George, and he commented like a on the music. Mm, yes, and he said the music was enticing. Really? And, uh, he was hearing it. So... Mm. I don't, I don't remember George commenting on the music uh, that night, but I, like I said, they were really more focused on each other than anything else. So, um, but if he said that, then maybe there is some connection there. Maybe, maybe there was something strange about it. And was there any song in particular? Maybe you could piece the melody or some notes together from it. Um. Uh, they kind of look to each other. I, no, not neither one of us are really musically in, inclined. Uh, mm. uh, uh, if I may, do you remember exactly when they started uh, being all lovey dovey on each other? Well, um, it must have been sometime. The reason why we were suspicious is that we had called them to confirm our, um, our dinner date and, uh, well, Mark spoke to George on the phone, and well, you, you can say, and uh, Mark says, yeah, he was in a fairly bad mood at the time, uh, said mm -hmm. that they had just gotten into a row, and um, things weren't looking great. They actually almost canceled the, the date because of it, so I'm assuming whatever happened, it was sometime between the restaurant uh, the between leaving the house and arriving at the restaurant so maybe think maybe it was some sort of illicit substance involved did you arrive after them uh no we arrived before them um maybe like 10 or 15 minutes hmm. and they were when they walked in the door they were yes all over each other right 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 and right. do they do they oft partake of said uh, substances no no by by all means no i never never seen i mean they were they were good folks went to church every sunday nothing nothing like that hmm. Haru snick snickers a little bit uh, there have been a couple of uh talk in the neighborhood of uh large uh some sort of creature uh sorry a bear or something uh like hidden on roofs and disrupting tiles. Someone's mailbox was disturbed. Do you know anything about that? 
Oh, I had heard from Wendy down the street. Um, uh, so it's, Mark, you, you, you weren't there when we, we spoke earlier, but yes, there had been some sort of, I guess, vandalism of some kind down there. Um, actually, uh, do you remember it was late last night we heard that, that noise? Uh, and Mark says, yes, like a, there was like a thumping on the roof for, for a moment. It was, it was odd. I thought maybe a branch had fallen down. Um, but no damage that I could see. Uh, it must have happened around uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, did you hear scraping or just a thud? Um, it was a... a I, I thought it was a branch because it was a, the, a, a bang and then um, a little bit of, of shifting of something like like a branch mm. rolling down or sliding down the, mm. the roof and... Uh, I went outside for a moment and uh, didn't see anything to speak of. Uh, Jesse's gonna lean over to Haru and just mouth wings flying. Maybe question marks on page. <laughs> he leans over with his phone and say, says, I could probably take care of that. How? He gives her a wink. <clears throat> well, why don't the two of you look outside at said place, and I will talk to these people. And I, he puts his hands out for them to like take his hands to the to the couple, and and then he's like, and hold hold each other's hand if you if you don't mind, if, if I may. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go investigate outside and see what we can see. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they they both like lean in. They they take your hands and both of them sort of close their eyes uh, and uh, begin to focus their energies. Um, and uh, very much both of them like really committing to this. Uh, awesome. So, uh, <laughs> Tamlin will uh, you know uh, uh, basically say something along the lines of uh, "more to est blue est." Uh, reveal on uh, the canto, and uh, he'll he'll actually try to like read their minds, see if they're telling the truth or if okay. there's anything else here. Um, yeah. So while the other two go outside, uh, I think like read a person uh, works okay. well for that. All right, and, and that is with sharp. Uh, yes. Or... Uh, actually, I'll for the purpose of this, I'll say read a person with weird. Um, Okay. Spice thing is up. Right. Take it. Oh, dang! The goth God. Ah. Woo. Killing it. <laughs> All right. Um, so you can ask two questions from the reader person list. Oh, uh, reader person list. Uh, it's under basic moves. There we go. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah, I guess. Are they telling the truth? Uh, I think you get, you, based on, like, they're not, they feel very open to you at this moment. Um, there's been nothing that you've been able to tell so far, and based on their, like, just commitment to what is going on, uh, you get there, they're telling the truth. They might be embellishing a bit and, like, uh, maybe talking things up to try to, like, add to the flavor of what's going on because they're so into this right now. Um, right. But yeah, they're telling the truth. And then... Um, who? Um, <laughs> I guess, I mean, is there a... I basically do... I. What does the what does their character intend to do in the way of uh, uh, in in regards to this situation? Like, are they looking for magic means to protect themselves, or or that kind of thing? Where where it where they wouldn't be involved basically if they are looking to protect themselves. That kind of I'm trying to get a feel along. Okay, like are they are. 
were they somehow do like responsible for this or actually are they right. worried about maybe being next? Um, yeah. You don't gather it's on the forefront of their minds that they're worried about being next because I think that's just the nature of these their their personalities that it happened to them, but nothing like that would ever happen to us. But um, you gather they're open and from like your conversation as you're uh, as you're kind of doing kind of a cold read on them um, during your little uh, your your performance here. Um, yeah, I mean, there is that kind of growing anxiety within them that, like, maybe this is something supernatural that we need to ward ourselves of these negative energies um, and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, I guess he'll uh, take a breath and relax and be like, oh, you dear people, he'll put their hands together and, and he, he's got a little bit of a tear in one eye. He's like, you dear people, I, I'm so sorry for your loss. And, you know, may may your house be protected and, and, and your love keep such things in the dark where they belong. <laughs> they're, they're eating it up. Um, I'll get back. I want to get back to the reading in a second, but I want to go with what's okay. happening outside. Uh, so uh, Jesse and Haru, uh, you both head out the back door. Um, mm mm-hmm. Take a look on the grounds. Um, assume one of you has like a flashlight or something to look around with, maybe. Yeah, just out of nowhere, like from inside her leather jacket, she has one of those big fuck all, like uh, whatever the big ones are called, the flashlights. Mag lights. The mag lights, yes. Just pops that out. Perfect. I should change this. We've been having that going for a while. Um, okay, so you uh, get a look over the grounds. Anything mm-hmm. specifically you're looking for? Tracks, uh, scratch marks in the uh, siding, uh, just to confirm that this thing didn't climb up this house, because that wouldn't make any sense for it to... Why is it on roofs? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh... Signing roofs. Okay. Uh, anything harder you're looking for different than that or just the same <clears throat> things? Uh, I think he's going to head to the roof, actually, to check it out. Okay. Looking for the same things, like marks on the roof. Okay. Huh. Those musics aren't... That music isn't playing. Uh... Okay. I could, I could hear it. Oh, you could? Okay. It's not playing for me. Uh, so I'm just going to... Go back to the other one because it's the other one that's working for me right now. Uh, okay, so you're actually going up to the roof. I'm pretty sure I didn't miss that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the nature of your thing. Uh, are you? I have a fly it... speed. Okay, that's <laughs> why I want to make sure you're flying up to the roof. Just like sticks his hands in his pockets, turns to Jesse, like. Good thing I'm not afraid of heights. And he jumps backward, like a skip backwards, and he just slowly starts levitating up to the roof. Show off. All right, perfect. Uh, well, since you guys are investigating two different areas, I'll have you both roll a uh, investigate a mystery. Um, okay. I'm not the sharpest boy in the shed, but it'll work out eventually. <laughs> God damn, guys. Jeez. Okay. My job. Uh, this is my job. Yeah. It's your job. Detect. Uh, so what do you both? What'd you both roll? Twelve. Seven. Okay. So on the ground, Jesse, you get to ask uh, either one specific and or two general uh, mm-hmm. questions, and Haru, you can ask uh, one general question. I need to check out the general questions. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess for this one, how how does this thing move? Okay, that yeah, this will kind of clarify things. Uh, so mm-hmm. you you begin to look around on the ground the best you can, just see if there's any trace of it. Uh, and this is what you noticed. Um, so yeah, there's no signs on like the siding or anything that something climbed mm-hmm. up there. Uh, and you're just scanning the grounds and you actually go to like the area between the that would be between the uh two estates uh of the mm-hmm. winthrops and the austins um 
and you're walking out away from the house, just kind of looking around to see if you find anything. And you find a section of the ground uh, that you kind of lean down closer to, and you see like a divot, like something like impacted the ground mm-hmm. um, or pushed off of it uh, mm-hmm. very firmly. Uh, and you look at that and you see two distinct impressions right next to each other, which is, I think, what clues you in at first. Because at first you th- it, it might just look like a, like a small pothole to anyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, and you look back towards the house and you realize you're about 50 feet away from it where you are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you get the impression, uh, and I think I'll, I'll give it to uh, Haru just because you're up there as part of this. Um, mm-hmm. You do, Haru begins to, uh, you do find some, the shingles aren't like broken off, but there are a couple of that are like fractured uh, and signs of something impacting the roof up there. Uh, you don't know if this thing could fly uh, or if it is flying, but it's at least jumping real hard um, mm-hmm. to get places. Um, so either this thing is very strong uh, and the amount mm-hmm. of pressure it takes for it to hit the ground like that, uh, it would yeah. have to be to leave that sort of impact. Right. And is this like narrowing down the list that we have as far um, as what it could be? I think that has taken it off of your list of things that that it could be. I don't think, other than some sort of wear kangaroo, um, mm. I think it's something that like you've never heard of before. Okay. Wear oh, kangaroo, the... maybe though. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, put it on the list. Jacked. <laughs> um. From my hold one, could I see where it was? Uh, where did it go from here? Mm. Um, so yeah, from 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 the impact that you're getting from uh, Jesse down there and what you're seeing up here, you're gathering that when the Austins heard this, it was coming from the other house that had already been. This is probably as it was leaving the Winthrops. Um, and you're looking for signs of where it, uh, where it might have gone, uh, and there's nothing immediately, like, in the space where it landed, so it indicates that it probably moved along the roof a bit. Um, mm-hmm. so you start to, um, kind of look around, um, and I think you find two things. One is you find near the edge of one of the roofs, uh, or the, 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 like, the overhang of the roof, uh, you see something kind of fluttering there in the in the wind, and there is a tuft of white fur uh, on the uh, kind of caught in the shingles. Um, and as you kind of look down over it, because you're hovering and you don't have to really worry too much about it, like where this edge is, and you look down and you can see from this vantage point, you can see into the window of the uh, uh, of like the master bedroom. Uh, of the Austins, um, and that window's like cracked open a little bit, um, but uh, and you can hear a little bit of the conversation going on inside. But it looks like it, it, uh, it like kind of came over to this window for a bit, um, and then as far as you can tell, uh, there's another like impact point on the far side of the roof, a little bit away that looks like it probably jumped off um, towards like across the street. Um, he will hover back down to Jesse, um, hand her the tuft of fur, leaving him back points. Uh, maybe I could follow it. I crosses wear kangaroo off my list. All right, we follow it, then what? We stop it before it does that again, like you said. All right, you're crazy, but I'm in. You son of a bitch. This was your idea from the get, and he's like slowly hovering away. <laughs> Put your feet down. People are gonna see you. <laughs> we'll uh, wander back in and gather up Tamlin. Okay. Uh, so you head back inside where Tamlin, you're completing your 
you're reading and the two uh the the austin sitting across from you just like smiling um and uh they uh the, you you and they open their eyes and kind of look to each other and smile and then uh alice uh looks at you and says so is did you get everything you needed i think so i think uh i think the danger has passed over you for now <laughs> she smirks a little to herself <laughs> That's what I, that's, that's what I feel too. Um, both of you stay safe. And if you need to, you can, and he realizes he doesn't have a business card or whatever. And, um, he pulls out his tablet sized phone. It's like, if you'd like, I can give you my number, anything you can call. Of course. Yes. Yes. Uh, and like takes your, takes your card, uh, and, or, get your number and says uh and and please yeah is uh if if there's anything you need please call us and and let us know uh we mm-hmm. we love we really want to to help uh close this and 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 lay to rest the the the, the memories that we have of of our of our beloved friends you got a kid and they, they start to walk out yeah <laughs> Okay. Close the door. What a bunch of kooks. <laughs> okay. We uh, got some tracks to follow, Tamlin. You uh, up for a night on your feet? Um. Yes. And he pulls out the coffee that you gave him. She pulls out another Red Bull from nowhere. Where did that come from? <laughs> down there <laughs> oh, like, i just saw a hand like just reach down towards gb <laughs> looks like it sounds, smells like soup <laughs> uh and then we're gonna start tracking this thing yeah okay all right uh <laughs> you uh <laughs> Uh, you begin to to uh, track the the you 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 head across the street um, and you uh, follow the the like trail that uh, you found and actually after following you find another impo- in, impact in like a yard across from you um, the, or across the street uh, similar to what you saw before and you follow that a little bit and you find that broken mailbox that you saw the pictures of previously uh and then uh a few homes down you find the 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 broken roof and you kind of piece together a uh a trail that this uh creature has has taken um and as you um continue to follow this trail like backpack back into the neighborhood uh you reach a point where uh, you reach like the last house, and the uh, the impacts uh, have have stopped. You can't see another one that you uh, that kind of leads away from it. Um, but it's strange because you reach this last house in the neighborhood, and there's a few cars out front, or there's two cars out front, uh, and one of the upstairs windows is open, but none of the lights are on in the house. Hmm. Hara, you mind uh, popping up there, seeing what's uh, what's going on? She's gonna pull, go into her her jacket and pull out a nine millimeter gun. She goes into his pocket and then flashes the what's it? the 38 he has and then puts it back in if you hear screaming that's probably me (laughs) and then he'll look left look right make sure the neighborhood's clear and then (sighs) go in okay uh you hover up into uh, up to the open window and inside and i think one thing you notice is you get closer to the window um it's open but there is a piece of the windowsill still attached to the lock on the window uh and it looks like it was just pulled open um with by something with with great force enough to break the sort of older wood on the home um and as you kind of crest into the uh into the room beyond you see this is like a guest room of some kind um 
and it's empty, uh, there's a door across the room uh, that is off its hinges. Um, just kind of askew in the frame. Uh, there is the sound of a hammer cocking back as he kind of like tries to seal Team Six in, check the corners, make sure everything's all right. Should we be busting in this door? Uh, uh, flying's hard, so maybe can can you kick in a door? Let's see. <laughs> I would like to bust this door in, please. Okay. Just roll tough for me. All right. Okay. I would like to use my move. Uh, the postman always rings twice. Okay. Twice per mystery. As long as you follow your code, you may re-roll a roll. This is, my code is, with great capability comes great duty. Sure. Which I am capable of saving these people, therefore I will. Here we go. Eight. Uh, eight. You uh, come to the door. <sighs> Brace yourself for a second. Bring out your gun. And then... <laughs> and it budges a bit the first time. And you hear like a crack. But it doesn't like fully swing in. <clears throat> and horror, you hear that upstairs. You just hear this... Bam! Uh, <laughs> down from the first floor. Uh, followed very quickly by another bam as the door is kicked in the rest of the way. Uh, and then there's a few subsequent thuds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he makes his way to the banister and like looks down if there is one. Uh, yeah, so you kind of jog doo -doo 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 across uh, to the banister and you look downstairs uh, and you see Jesse and, uh, and uh, Tamlin. What the fuck? Hands raised in the air, gun, <laughs> motioning. Uh, I will attempt to close the door behind us. <laughs> you can, yeah, you attempt to. Um, <laughs> kind of, just so it's not like, you know, wide Yeah, open. you just like pull it back towards it and it kind of is, is it's a jar, but nobody from outside could tell that mm -hmm. it was open. Um, and let me get some spookier music going. Um, Tamlin, Tamlin looks worried and he takes his walking stick and he kind of shakes it and it, it becomes a sword but he's kind of holding it by the non-sharp part of the blade rather than like a sword <laughs> and he's just kind of got it like like it's going to protect him somehow mm. yes mm. hilt grab it by the hilt Thank you. Let's go. Please explore. We need to find this thing. Uh, I'm trying to find it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're in the house. The two of you are downstairs. Um, it's the same general layout as, as the other houses you have been in. So you know that upstairs is probably going to be the uh, probably two of the bedrooms and one of the master and the master bedroom is going to be upstairs. Kitchen, living area. Uh, probably a, another third bedroom or study downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, Haru, since you are on the second floor right now and you're at the banister so closest to it, uh, you kind of look down the hall and you can see the hallway leading back towards the master bedroom. Um, you can see the door at the end of the hall is sort of cracked open just a little bit. And for a moment, you see something move. <sighs> assumptions, assumptions. Uh, <clears throat> he's going to creep down the hallway to see if he can take a peek through the crack. Okay. Uh, you ease down the hallway and come up to the door. It's open inward just a little bit. And you peek your head through the door and inside um and you get a couple of things is one you get hit with a pretty bad smell and i think you're prepared mentally for what to find inside uh and you kind of peek in and you can see in the darkness something strewn across the room 
And then as you're looking inside, you hear a crack. And your eyes dart up and towards the corner of the room and you see sort of clinging to the corner, it's two feet bracing itself against the wall, one foot dug into the ceiling with something in its hand that just cracked uh, into a, two pieces in its mouth. Two saucer-shaped yellow eyes with cat-like pupils staring out at you from the darkness. He takes a step back, kind of lines up the door with, like, where the handle would be. It's cracked, right? Yeah. And opposite, where, where would the shape be? It would be to, like, my left-ish, right? Uh, yeah, so... If you're looking at the at the door, it was kind of cracked open this way. So be yeah, kind of to your left into the room, uh, in like the far corner. Cool. Um, he pulls out his phone, types "master bedroom," hits send, and as he's hitting send, he's kicking in the door. All right. At the same time, you guys all get a did he? Uh, those of you that have text tone on, uh-huh. and you hear a poof upstairs, uh, and you come rushing into the room and you turn in the direction uh, with your gun drawn towards the creature in the corner, uh, and you uh, at the same time as you see the creature, you just hear this um, this like thrumming noise from that corner of the room. This is like low intense kind of purring almost. Um, and you shoot at it. Um, not, it wouldn't be my first choice, but yeah, okay. sure, let's shoot at it. <laughs> no, what do you want to do? What do you do? Um, actually, uh, let me just read something real quick. The gun is more for scare tactic. Obviously. Okay. That's fine. I just want to know you bust into the room, come wheeling he busts around the into corner. Into the room, um, wheeling around the corner. He takes a three-point sprinter pose, and there's a thrum of wind behind him as he jettisons towards the beast in a flying kick. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and roll to uh, kick, kick some ass. ass. Uh, let's do it. Ten. 10 awesome unholy strength i roll weird nice uh so on a 10 plus um you and so on any success you and whoever you're fighting inflict harm on each other uh on a 10 plus you get to choose an extra effect uh i believe i want to deal damage and not receive any okay uh i don't think you can not receive any you can not receive you can suffer less harm so minus one um, okay. Yeah, uh, I think that was the apocalypse world. Uh, uh, Apa, yeah, yeah. Okay. Those are the rules for not receiving any damage. So yeah, you can choose to gain. Uh, you can either take plus one forward, suffer, deal one more harm, take one less harm, or force them where you want them. Are your options? Um, I think I'm gonna take one plus forward. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So you gain your plus one forward. You come rushing up and go in for a kick, and you just. Uh, land a solid blow to like the center mass of this uh, creature and that uh, humming noise uh, intensified to this like rolling thunder almost Uh, and the uh, creature it's it's uh, massive eyes you see the pupils constrict Uh, and at this close range even in the darkness I think as your eyes uh, adjust slightly you just see this almost cat-like face uh, staring back at you between these eyes. It has sort of a recessed uh, nose and you see the in the shadow these four uh, sort of like ear, long ear protrusions kind of descending down to about its, uh, its shoulder. Um, and it then uh, drops whatever it's holding as you kick it and with that roar it slashes out in your direction instinctively. Uh, you're going to take three harm uh, minus whatever armor you might have. Um, I do have a move whenever I take damage. <clears throat> I roll a plus cool. And on a 10 plus, I heal two. On a 7, 9, I heal one. Okay. But on a fail, I take more damage, so... 
Okay. Uh, so you can use that now, or you can decide to use it later on in the encounter uh, if you want. I think because I don't think it's at the moment you take damage. I think it's anytime you you really want to. So that's up to you if you want to do that right now. To just mitigate, try sure. to mitigate. Sure. I'm gonna use my plus one here. <laughs> okay. Twelve. All right, perfect. Uh, so yeah, you, you heal two. You said. Yes. All right. So you heal two as the creature slashes out at you. And I think it does that reflexively and kind of pushes itself across like more towards the middle of the room uh, away from you in this corner. So it's not like backed into a corner and it sort of begins like back towards the window looking uh, looking up at you. Uh, the others downstairs. You hear this. Uh, Jessie's going to pull out her phone and dial Ellie's number because she's the one at the front. Uh, and she's gonna like put the phone in her pocket open so that she has hands free as she's doing this. But when uh, Ellie picks up, she's just gonna say the house number, found the creature, you know, uh, bring cars or br bring yourself. You know, there might be calls about gunshots. So just so you know, and then flips the phone shut in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, you just get like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you hear the sound of an engine cranking on the other end uh, as you flip over, uh, flip the phone off. Uh, and you and uh, Tamlin uh, come uh, running up the stairs and you see this creature now silhouetted against the back window, uh, standing about a human size. Uh, the moonlight casting on a white fur covered creature, cat like face, saucer sized eyes, uh, and with this uh, four ears descending down onto its shoulders, uh, has this like thin body and long arms, which as it stands by pedal, uh, by pedal reach the floor. Um, mm -hmm. And each arm ending in these long serrated claws. Uh, but more than anything, you notice this like very dense lower body, uh, like that of a, almost like that of a kangaroo. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I said the word kangaroo, and that's what got you. <laughs> it's officially a were kangaroo. kangaroo. Uh, I have my, uh, my uh, occult uh, confidential where uh, I can ask a question from the because yes, I'm seeing the monster for the first time. So, what can harm this? Um, I'm gonna. There's an answer to that that I want to give you uh, that mm -hmm. I, I think I want this fight to develop just a little bit more. And sure. I think I can give you that answer, but I will yeah. in a second, just okay. narratively. Sure. It's going to make sense here in a moment. Uh, yeah. But the two of you see it. Uh, what do you do? I'm going to guess big eyes, night dweller. Probably not good with light. Okay. It's, it's my initial response. So she's going to pull out her Fujifilm camera. And flash it a couple times. Well, w once because it takes a while. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you you crank or crank, snap, and there's a flash of light uh, that catches this creature, and you see that perfect outline of it. Uh, you also see a bit of the gore and everything on the ground of whatever whatever couple lived here. Um, and uh, the creature, as, as soon as that happens, uh, you see those eyes constrict and like in the, the lids close. Uh, it, yeah, it does not seem well adjusted that. It's kind of stunned for a second, kind of backs up, shattering one of the windows as this happens, as it stumbles around. Uh, and that, that kind of rolling hum, this, this, uh, this uh, noise billowing up mm -hmm. from it uh, intensifies in that moment out of like in the sort of distressed uh, mm -hmm. tone. Um, I don't. I don't know if there's necessarily a role. Interfere? It, uh, oh, yeah. Interfere would work perfectly here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Roll cool. Boom. Two. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> Shit! Yikes. Uh, so <laughs> here's what happens. Uh, I've never rolled that bad. <laughs> that's very bad. Uh, it, uh, it, sh it, 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 it's kind of smashes the window and strikes mm -hmm. out a little bit uh, and I think it just instinctively just springs forward uh, and just goes smashing headlong into you. Tamwin, you're right next to her and suddenly you are not next to her. Uh, <laughs> as Yeah, go ahead. Can, can I protect someone? Yeah, you can go ahead and try to protect her. Yeah. Because uh, I have special stuff for that. You do. Protect, protect someone. So do you still have to roll plus tough, or do you have something where you can replace I, it? 
I do have to roll plus tough, but if I succeed, be- better stuff happens. Okay, good. So, um, so tough. Tough is not my good. Okay. Um, I think it's this one. That's not bad. Nine. Eight. Even with the okay. minus one. And I have the uh, I have a shield spell. Uh, when okay. you protect someone, you gain plus two armor against any harm that is transferred to you. This doesn't stack with any other armor. Okay. So, so, uh, so on a success, uh, so when you try to prevent harm to another character uh, on a success, you protect them okay, but you'll suffer some or all of the harm they were going to get. Um, so you... I'm kind of getting the image of you see this thing spring forward wildly in your direction uh, and you dart in front of uh, Jesse to try to sort of protect her. uh, And the two of you are thrown backward in that moment. Uh, So what would have been three harm, um, I'll say you reduce to one harm. um, And then I'll say Jesse takes that because she's on the back end of this and is going to get slammed into the uh, to the ground. Um, and if you have any armor, Jesse, you can reduce that as well. Uh, but the two of you are thrown backwards as this thing goes like toppling down the hall at the other end and kind of lands at the top of the banister, um, and, and still blinking and kind of shaking its, its, uh, head to try to see again. You guys just hear, ow! <laughs> yeah. Oof. Oh, goodness. <sighs> Uh, so it it lands at the top of the banister, uh, looks down at the two of you, and uh, I think it, hmm, yeah, it, it it kind of leaps up to the ceiling and kind of clings onto the ceiling, uh, and then it begins to make a uh, a noise that you. I've not heard it make so far. Uh, it's that that rolling uh, in its it, coming from its its chest uh, kind of intensifies, and then almost like a like a music box winding up begins to form on this low droning note, uh, which forms this this strange eerie melody almost. It, it's straight like like uh, like the uh, it's the Gregarian like throat singers. It, it just uh, like uh, transforms into this this strange kind of droning sound. Uh, I think Gregorian is what I meant. Uh, the uh, as it does this, um, I, I, I'll go and say like you guys can do something as this is happening. I'm going to probably do what I do best and chase after it onto the ceiling. Okay, so uh, Haru comes running down. I assume like upside down running along the ceiling since you're flying uh, is kind of the image I'm getting unless there's something more uh, exciting that you want to you um, do. From where he had kicked it, he spins, put plants a foot on the wall, kicks off of it, and there's this gust of wind that blows out. Um, as he's flying over a um, Tam and Jesse, they can see that his pant legs are ripped and there's like these scythe like protrusions coming out of them out of his legs and uh, they're you could almost say that his face is a little bit furry and there's like a splotch of black across like his nose mm-hmm. and he's gonna try and spin upwards towards this creature and knock it down with another kick okay Oh, weird. Yeah, roll, uh, roll to kick some ass. I'm just going to try and shoot it. Uh, okay. I got a nine. <laughs> uh, a nine. So on that, you're just going to deal your damage, uh, and it's going to deal its damage back. Um, so what is your damage again? Two. So it would have Two. taken a total of four by now. Okay. Um, you're getting... It does have some armor. Um... So as you are, as you are hitting it uh, and kicking it with your uh, your scythe kicks, um, it it does seem like it is like 
it's it just feels tougher like leathered than than you are expecting um and it just has this even though it has almost this frail oh. looking form yeah go ahead uh my natural attacks ignore armor oh perfect oh because you have magic they're they're uh, magical or is it just that they just ignore armor they just ignore armor perfect hey. so uh I'll say you feel that, uh, but you're the so probably like with your legs you actually feel the impact, but with the scythe, scythe or, it just it just slashes right through. Uh, and again, that the droning this this creature seems panicked. Its eyes like the the pupils flare open a bit more out of the the fire flight response as you are chasing it down. Um, uh, Jesse and uh, Tamlin, shoot it. Shoot it. Okay. Shoot it. Shoot it. I rolled a nine. Okay. And that's two harm. It's close and loud. So. Okay. So, uh, so here is what happens with that. Um, you, at the same time, this this melody begins to film because this is the you guys inflict your harm on each other. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not. It's not going to inflict harm on you in the traditional sense. Yeah. Um, you you feel that melody you fight you you point your gun up at it and you fire at that instinct that you fire though it finally hits and you just feel calm for a second and uh i don't know i i guess uh i'll ask uh is there is there any is there any world i don't want to guess jesse's preferences but is there any world within either haru or uh uh, Tamlin would be uh, relatively attractive to your character. Yeah, I mean, Tamlin's sitting right there. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so you just looked at him and you're like, it's like you've never seen him before. It's like you really just appreciate a lot about just... Damn, that's a good looking dude. <laughs> you just see Jesse turn and look all soupy eyed at you, Tamlin, and like, <laughs> Tablet reddens and uh, is like, oh, um, um, bam, and blasts the creature. <laughs> uh, at the same time, however, as you fire the shot, there's that explosion. And Haro, you get the best uh, look at this since you're the closest. The uh, shot rings out. Uh, the bullet uh, grazes the shoulder, uh, which doesn't seem to bother the creature as much as as that crack happens you watch as all four ears sort of pull back and the creature's eyes narrow and it lets out a this this terrible noise that music sort of stops uh and it seem it begins to retract backwards and sort of scamper down the hall at the sound of that noise trying to get as far away from jesse as possible um and then tamlin you want to try to blast it um so it it's scrambling away like do i believe it's gonna get away uh it looks like it's trying to run yeah okay so the shot fires i i i looked over like oh my and then i'm like uh so instead i was gonna blast it but as, as i see it's gonna move i try to hold it in place uh, okay you know using like, magic uh, yep uh, yeah, so I think that is one of, is probably one of the more literal interpretations of use match that we've done because there's a bar or trap a, yep. a creature. Yep. Um, so go ahead and roll weird. Come on, magic. Oh, goodness. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, not much. I don't think anybody can help me with magic, right? You have luck points. Let's do that. I will definitely burn a luck. I'll be like, that, no. <laughs> you see him get a, a, like a, the most emotion uh, he's had the whole time, other than the oh my. Um, he, he grips like this, and the 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 wall itself, out of like sheer force, like <laughs> grabs a hold of it and yeah. tries to hold it to the ceiling. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you you get a hold of it um so what is the what is the uh glitch you're choosing for the oh goodness uh so it can be weekend short, short duration yeah, yeah i think short duration is probably probably the thing i'm like it's really strong <laughs> as, he, as he starts to like shake 
Uh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so the creature is there and it's scrambling. I think it's grabbing pieces of the plaster uh, and trying to pull itself back as hard as it can, just like throwing these to the ground, like getting up into the studs, trying to pull itself free uh, just frantically as far as as, as fast as it can. Uh, but you are holding it in place. You just don't know how long you can do it for. Uh, it doesn't have much it can do right now. It's just trying to escape. Uh, is there anything that uh, the other two are going to do? Uh, gonna use my unquenchable vitality again and hope for the best to heal and then attack it. Okay. Nine, I heal one. Okay. Alright, go for it. Kick some ass. Kick some ass, take some names! <laughs> Ten. Ten, perfect. Uh, so you can choose an additional effect. Uh, I'm going to probably grab another... Nah, I'm, I'm going to take minus one harm from it. Okay, so it would be th three as you come running up to it, uh, or, or flying up to it and going for another kick. The blades, uh, I, do you think they leave physical damage, or it is more like damage at like a <clears throat> metaphysical or, or supernatural It would be physical level? damage. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah, another huge set of gashes just slash across the front of this uh, creature, uh, this this dark blood now beginning to sort of pool down uh, out of its fur um, and it lets out another this this, this rumbling sound from its uh, from its chest uh, and in anguish um, as you slash across it um, and at the same time it uses its claws as grabbing pieces of the plaster and stuff and as it slashes out at you just frantically a few times uh, but you avoid it uh, with your uh, sweet kicks um <sighs> It's just a capoeira <laughs> on the floor with scythe legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so the uh, so Jesse, uh, you you feel this um, again this sensation over you. Uh, for the sake of right now, you just you have negative one on any violent actions that you take, uh, uh -huh. but you can attempt to do something if you if you want. Uh, did I notice the uh, the noise thing? Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, okay. I think maybe somewhere subconsciously you can recognize the like the correlation mm -hmm. of that. You still feel this like again this mm -hmm. calm like, and it's it's because the noise has stopped. You can feel it mm -hmm. retreating, but you still have that after effect right now of whatever is whatever was causing cool. it. Uh, I'm gonna. She's gonna like pluck uh, Tamlin on the nose and say, "Cover your ears, doll face," and uh, <laughs> she's gonna pull out her. Uh, she has a laser microphone recorder. That's one of her uh, special items that she gets. Uh, and she is going to like push the play record button at the same time and then point the, uh, the microphone back at the speakers. So it is doing an infinite loop and getting really loud. Feedback. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, was it muted? <laughs> Uh, there is a uh, that that noise begins to climb and climb and climb and climb and climb, and you uh, see the creature just shrieking as it as this happens uh, in this like again not this high shriek. It's it's not making any like loud noises, just mm -hmm. this like rumbling. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it just it seems in agony over this this uh, this noise, um, and it actually stops striking out at Haru in that moment as it's just trying to like cover its ears. Um, uh, so that does have an effect. It, you have weakened it, uh, essentially, with the, with that ongoing noise. Um, anybody want to do anything? This creature is uh, kind of on its last leg right now. Essentially, who who puts it out of its misery? <laughs> I kind of want to yell to Tamlin, sword. Okay. Uh, then I guess what Tamlin will do is, for his action, he will enchant said blade as he hucks it through the air to him. So it is a, it is a, I think it's a plus one, plus one harm and counts as magic. Whoosh. Okay. You chuck the sword down the hall, and her, you snatch it out of the air. Uh, what do you do? Um, gonna try and kill this bitch. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll to kick some ass. Uh, you, I'm gonna give you plus one forward because of this thing's weakened condition. 
14. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm going to choose to deal extra damage on top of that to make yeah, sure it's extra dead. That's fine. Uh, just describe <clears throat> how you kill. I think this is an ongoing thing with, with RJ brutally murdering everything in every game that I run for. <laughs> for but you love now. the descriptions. Yeah, I do. So. Go for it. That's why I ask. Uh, when Tamlin tosses the sword over to Harto, he like takes a leg um, bends it around the back of the blade so it's spinning in place, and then he kicks it with the top of his foot so it just shinks right into the throat of the beast. Perfect. Uh, and as the as the blade sinks into the throat, and you hear this that 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 rolling kind of stops as interrupted by this this gurgling noise, and it slashes at the ground a few times, and it just grows weakened and weakened and weakened, and then you watch as those that there's that sheen to its its saucer like eyes just goes a bit dull and the the irises uh open or the pupils open and it just slumps back onto the ground as that magical spell then releases it <sighs> Tur turns to tamlin sorry kid i uh don't know what happened there got uh pretty got in my head a little bit it, it, I understand. Uh, Sabrina would kill me. Um. <laughs> well, we got a mess to clean up. Cops should be on their way soon. So... I, uh, see if you can find a tarp. I'll, uh, I'll talk to the lead detective. And T Tamlin's looking around and he looks at, uh, Haruto and, uh, is like, should I magic it clean? He kind of lifts it up onto our shoulder. We should take it out back. Uh, okay. Yeah, don't get rid of it. Uh, that's going to be a, a huge issue if you do that. Then we'll stuff it in your trunk. All right, let's not get forward here. Find a tarp. <laughs> we'll put it in the back seat, okay? My trunk's kind of full. How about this very expensive rug? <laughs> If it works. <laughs> Roll the body up in the rock. <laughs> uh, and while they're while Tamlin's like helping him, he's like, huh. she said she's got a lot of junk in her trunk. <laughs> <laughs> to, to him, it makes him laugh because he's not. Harto also <laughs>, laughs. <laughs> uh, you see the flashing lights of a uh, police cruiser uh, pull, pull up outside. Uh, and Ellie steps out as <laughs> Haru is is walking out with a uh, a rolled up <laughs> body of some kind in a uh, <laughs> in a rug, um, and Ellie comes standing up. She has, I think, she has her uh, her hand uh, mm -hmm. on on her gun. Just cautiously, she sees you coming out, uh, Jesse, and says, well, "Is everything all right here?" It is now. It's been taken care of. Uh, the creature is dead uh, but unfortunately we did not get here soon enough and the uh, the couple inside is no longer with us so we can handle this one of two ways we could uh, chalk it up to another one of those uh, animals get it out or I can talk to the te detective and see if I can get uh, get him on our side if you know what I mean right um Listen, I, I, you're pretty persuasive, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know if Wallace is gonna, gonna go for it. Um, why don't, why don't you get out of here and, uh, I'll, I'll do the best I can to, to, to talk him down. All right. Your true friend. Yeah. She, uh, like, knocks her chin and, uh, walks into the car closes the door so should i remove all traces that we were there and that this animal thing occurred or or what you can yeah can. can try <laughs> haru's bungee cording the rug to the roof <laughs> it's just leaking <laughs> and uh yeah uh tamlin will go in and you know place a hand like on the carpet we're at the edge of the doorway and it's just kind of do like a press digitation to remove their their evidence from the mm. place perfect my bullet. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, good for for one last time. Roll use magic. All right. Come on, peeps. Oh, um, success. Yeah, still success. You just have to have a glitch too. Yeah. Um. I can we. Uh, is there a way to? Ha- I'll I'll take a problematic side effect. I guess. I'll let it be on me. Or I could spend a luck, and it worked great. Let's yep. spend a luck. Go yeah, for it. Might as well. <laughs> you uh, you it do is. it. You luck, and yeah. As so, you're you're not hiding the body or anything. You're just hiding uh, the Us. the traces of any sort of conflict. So yeah, the the walls and the floor kind of begin to stitch back together. Uh, there is a a hole in the ceiling from where the bullet got lodged into the ceiling. That's like closes up, and the bullet actually like drops down. Uh, into your hand um, and everything else kind of like writes itself uh, to where it was before you guys came into the house. And uh, once he gets in the, the back seat of the station wagon, he'll he'll be like, oh, this is yours. And he'll uh. <laughs> drop the bullet to you. Thanks. Another uh, successful case. You all hop in uh, in Jesse's car, and uh, Ellie sort of gives you the thumbs up as you as you drive off uh, into the night and away from the crime scene. Uh, and we're gonna leave with with one last scene as the uh, camera pans back, back, back away from the neighborhood, uh, and we cut to a building at uh, Emory University. Um, and we get a uh, let me pull this up. Uh, we get an image of an of an office uh, late in the evening at this point, uh, and there is a student and a professor talking outside of the office, and the the student seems upset uh, and says, uh, "the the professor is sort of patting uh, the the young woman on the back and and uh, saying." It's all right. Um, there, it's been a loss for all of us, but we'll get through. If you need anything, you know my office hours, and we can talk. And she uh, she nods and she says, uh, "Just Derek and Emily were were they were the I just don't know what I'm going to do without them." And he says, "I know." Just take the week off, and we'll see you back, and, and everything will be better. But if you need any help, and call the counselors, too. Uh, they've got um, some good people to talk to. Um, and she nods and, and heads down the hall, and he watches her and then heads back into his office. Uh, and you can see the office connects to a lab space, and as he heads back there, you see a single light uh, illuminating a um, uh, like an incubation chamber in the back of the room and as he uh, walks back towards it he sighs and he reaches into his back pocket pulls out a flask and, and drinks it and sets it down and he pulls up a chair and looks at the chamber and shakes his head and says how did this happen and as we pan to the chamber, you can see two eggs inside. One hatched, broken shells littering the ground. The other one cracks and then cracks again. And as it opens up, you see one very small, serrated, uh, clawed hand sort of pull its way out. And then from within the darkness of the shell, you just see a single... Uh, yellow eye, uh, its pupil constricted, and that's where we're gonna end the uh, our one shot. Oh can, man! Can, can we be in the car and and uh, Tamlin leans forward and is like, waffles? <laughs> yeah. That's what I was gonna say. We're going to a diner or something. <laughs> no, he's like waffles. Like hopefully. <laughs> 
Waffles. Oh, yeah. You all head out to get waffles <laughs> at the local diner. Denny's. The local waffle. <laughs> Denny's or Waffle House, one of the two. Yep. Uh, good game, guys. Fun stuff. Wow. Yeah, thanks. Wow. That was yeah, great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. What oh, was glad you guys. Uh, so it's just something I made up. Um, oh. Uh, for the sake of this mystery, uh, I can give you guys a little bit of a clue, and I called it the Heart Hunter. Um, and yeah, that's we didn't get into a lot of it. Uh, I don't know if I want to reveal too much though, because who knows? Maybe we'll pick yeah. this up again at a later date and uh, see how this concludes. But yeah, it's fun stuff. Um, I really like the Monster of the Week system and how's it how it mm -hmm. sets up uh, mysteries. Um, it's an interesting way to prep a game. Uh, I appreciate what Savannah does every week, every other mm -hmm. week now. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is obviously, for those of you out here watching, this is not our normal shtick. Uh, normally, I play in this game, and Savannah runs it. Uh, we play every other Sunday. A uh, bunch of college yokels uh, <laughs> running around trying to save people and fix their own message uh, messes most of the time um and uh Arja's character there is there too uh occasionally uh so He's so handsome so handsome uh but yeah so we will be back for this in two weeks uh same time same place just somebody different sitting in this chair um and we hope to see you there too uh in the meantime as well uh we've got a lot of stuff coming up over the next week or until the next time we meet for this game uh you can check out on thursday uh all Miss are true uh on which is a, a tales of the loop game uh saturday for saturday night's thunderball we're playing uh, D&D 5th edition or something vaguely like D&D 5th edition uh, and then back on next Sunday for uh, Pursuit of the Black Kestrel, a Pathfinder 2nd edition campaign um, and in the meantime join our Discord, follow us on Twitter uh, all that good stuff and enjoy all the fun shows that we have for you. Um, anything else for that you guys have before we get going? Nope? Alright. Well, fun game, guys. Uh, and until next time, good game, good hunting, and good night, Internet. Hey, bye-bye.